Chapter 726, Source After more than half a month of digging, Ryan finally found the secret place where the legendary Camelo could invalidate the wizard's magic, probably because of the long time of abrasion. The large amount of defensive magic that should have existed is now very few, so Ryan easily opened a stone slab and found a way to the ground. This underground passage was directly cut into the rock, but magic may have been used in the construction process, and the walls and the ceiling of the cave looked unexpectedly smooth. There is an alcove at every distance on the wall of the cave, which should be used to place candles or oil lamps in the past. For safety reasons, Ryan and Hermione did not use any lighting facilities, but simply rely on the ability of night vision to walk down the stone steps all the way. The steps are narrow and long, and it seems as if you can't see the end. After walking for nearly 20 minutes, the two talents found that the steps under their feet had disappeared, and a not-so-large cave appeared in front of them. The top of the cave grows a lot of fungi like sponges. These fungi emit as you blue cold light to outline the things in the cave and also make the top of the cave look like the night sky. It's a magical scenery. I didn't expect such a wonderful life in this dull cave. Hermione raised her head and looked at their shining blue fungus. Then she looked down at the cave. A stone platform in the center. I can feel that what we are looking for is on that stone platform, because I can feel as if something is calling me. Do you feel this way too? When I walked in before, I felt that the stone platform was a bit wrong. On the one hand, Ryan could clearly feel some weak magic fluctuations on the stone platform, and on the other hand, the stone platform it is also the only man-made structure in this space normally all important things will be placed in that place carefully inspected the surrounding environment and summoned the virgin rose to release several magic traps that were checked out it has to be said that the masters of magic that created anira did appear thousands of years ago and they also possess many powerful magics even today many important or commonly used magic the earliest origins come from that era but after thousands of years of development in the magic world Many complicated magics that were regarded as top-level inheritance have now become common things. Therefore, Ryan easily lifted the powerful defense magic around the stone platform, and then the two walked to the edge of the stone platform together. This stone platform is a square double-layer stone platform, not very tall. The appearance looks like an altar in the church. The brightly colored reliefs stained by various pigments on the stone platform make the whole stone platform vivid and lively, and also bring a life to this dead underground space. This is the legendary story of King Arthur. Looking at the continuous pictures on the reliefs, Ryan quickly recognized what kind of stories these reliefs narrate, from birth to Merlin's teaching. He pulled out the sword in the stone and established the round table. The knights will fight for a lifetime, and finally King Arthur, who was seriously injured after the battle of the sword fence, goes to Avalon. Here is the life of King Arthur. That is to say, the last renovation of this place should be after King Arthur disappeared in Avalon, that is, when King Arthur's kingdom began to fall apart. Hermione reacted at once. If this is the case, the need to use a lot of complex magic to protect things should be something very important but cannot be moved. Your conjecture makes sense, Ryan said, pulling out his wand and gently tapping the props held in the hands of some sculptures on the stone platform in a special order. At this time, Hermione noticed these embossed hands. The various weapons held in it are actually made of wood or metal, and they are completely small-scale models of real weapons. After the tapping, Ryan stepped back and looked at Shatai. After a clicking sound, Shatai slowly sank. After the stone platform completely disappeared from the ground, a Roman-style stone column slowly rose from the ground, and a basketball-sized grey stone ball embedded with gold wire was placed on top of the stone column. A very strong breath of death. After the stone ball appeared, Hermione felt a suffocating breath of death swept away from the stone ball all around. This is a grievance. Ryan thought of pulling a yellow rune paper out of his arms and throwing it out. As a result, the rune of the rune paper just broke away from Ryan's hand and then burned with a slam. Paper dust fluttering in the air. No problem. This is it. Looking at the paper dust, Ryan determined the specific situation here. The whole castle is a magic circle, and the builders use these resentful spirits in conjunction with the magic of moonlight to build a powerful magic circle specifically for magicians in this place. This method of using the soul of death is too rough, and it seriously violates the laws of nature. For Hermione who believes in the theory of life cycle. The current method of forcibly binding the undead to prevent them from obtaining tranquility is that she cannot accept it. After all, destroying the soul like Ryan's previous production of Our Lady of Roses is also a means of bringing the soul back to circulation, and now this completely restraint of the soul completely prevents the soul from entering the circulation. So I think we need to free these undead for thousands of years now, Ryan said to Hermione after carefully examining the stone ball. It's best if you do this, it can help you understand the power of death, no problem. Hermione said that she took the Sun Golden Sutra and the Undead Black Sutra from the space bag. Although the two books have been taken out by the gods, their own divine power, but its own precious materials make it pass through several after a thousand years of divine power, it is still a very useful cast item. 
After preparing all the necessities for casting spells, Hermione looked at Ryan who took a step back and asked, If I let these resentful souls be quiet now, then the magic circle here now will disappear, then. Before she finished, Ryan waved her hand to signal Hermione not to worry. Relax, in the exploration of a while ago, I have written down the magical structures in the castle. And after I came in, I also mastered the core technology of the entire magic circle. Seriously? The principle of this magic circle is not very complicated. I have basically understood the principle of this magic in my inspection just now. After going back, we can add a new weapon to the floating city. And and compared to this ancient magic array that must rely on the magic of moonlight, I think my new design should be better than this www.mtlnovel.com of course. I will not use the soul of the dead as the core. In the end, Ryan concluded, that is a very rough method for the floating city, as long as the tower spirit is used as the main guide core, and then the flying stone crystal is used as energy. Then the magic can be launched at any time to form a prohibited use around the magic area is just like Camelot. That would be great. Hermione nodded happily and stood up to start singing the spell. Ancient Latin mantras sang like an old ballad. With the chanting, two magic books also began to shine, and at the same time one or two cracks began to appear on the stone ball. Through these cracks, Ryan could see some white light revealing from the cracks. Finally, half an hour after the spell was recited, the shell formed by the first stone peeled off the stone ball like an eggshell and through the gap left after the stone shell fell, Ryan found hiding in this stone inside the ball is a light ball. On the surface of the light sphere, one painful face after another protruded and returned flat, revealing a strange taste. The fall of the first stone shell was like a signal, and soon the stone shells in the rest of the area fell one after another, and only a white light ball remained in the air. Now it's time for the next step. Hermione made a gesture on the chest while watching the white light ball. With her gestures, the two magic books that were originally placed on the ground automatically opened and floated into the air. In a flash, two colors of gold and black emerged from the pages of the two books, leaving the entire cave shrouded in the light of these two colors. Chapter 727, Dust to Dust, Soil to Earth. Under the light of two colors of gold and black, shimmering figures one after another emerged from the light ball in the middle of the cave. At the same time, the surrounding walls made a buzzing sound because of the magic resonance, as if responding to the sound of Hermione's spell. Those figures get bigger and bigger after leaving the sphere of light, and finally become the size of ordinary humans. At the same time, the details on his body are becoming clearer. It is no longer a vague human-shaped silhouette like in the past, but a human ghost formed by smoke. They wear ancient costumes and look just like the people painted on Hogwarts oil paintings. From their soul, Ryan could feel that they were not ordinary wizards during their lifetime. After being squeezed out of the light ball, they gathered together after a short burst of excitement, and then began to talk in ancient Latin. A few minutes later, an elderly wizard with a white beard and an ancient woolly pointed wizard hat was pushed out by other souls. He slowly floated in front of Lane and performed an ancient wizard etiquette for Lane. All souls come to hope to communicate with Ryan through him. Please wait a moment. Ryan returned the same courtesy, and then said in ancient Latin, Please let my companion put everyone out before talking, so that we can deal with the situation you face in one go. Dot. Fortunately, once the magic ritual that Hermione is presiding is running successfully, you don't need to put too much energy into it, and all the rest will naturally come to an end. As the soul continued to leave, the light ball also began to blink, and the frequency of blinking became higher and higher. Half an hour later, with the last soul left the light ball, the sphere of light also shone brightly and disappeared completely, just like a burned candle. At the same time, those souls are crowded in this small underground space. Ryan even reminded him of the train station during his spring festival in his previous life. Fortunately, the soul can fly, so after a simple consultation, some ghosts flew together with other ghosts to form a hemisphere form in the cave, and their focus is on Ryan and Hermione. Young people, just after these ghosts were lined up, the ghost old man who had been selected by the ghosts as his representative stood out from a group of ghosts and said to Ryan, Please tell us what time it is now. It is now January 1998 AD. Ryan answered the ghosts, and then asked, Oh, do you know the definition of ad? That's, yes, we knows this method of calculating time from people who don't know how to do magic. The old wizard's soul seemed to break Ryan's words a little impatiently, and then sighed softly. It has been more than 1000 years, and our kingdom should have disappeared into history. Yes, you are right, Hermione said, after King Arthur left the world and went to Avalon forever. The kingdom of Britain was completely disintegrated, and the people were scattered everywhere. Hermione's words immediately made the souls of these wizards noisy, and some ghost wizards' faces showed sad expressions. There were even individual ghost wizards who wept bitterly. This confusion lasted for several minutes before being crushed by the soul of the old wizard who was elected to communicate with Ryan. After everyone was quiet, the soul of the old wizard continued to ask, I think both of you are wizards like us, so what is the situation with the wizards now? Are you still awed and scared by ordinary people? The wizards are in a fair situation, but all wizards are now separated from ordinary people, 
because witch hunts have appeared among ordinary people hundreds of years ago. In order to protect both sides, the wizards passed the secrecy law. Lane answered seriously. The game of prey, the law of secrecy. These endless new vocabulary made these wizards who had been confined for thousands of years at a loss. So after a few minutes of quiet communication, the soul of the old wizard asked whether Ryan could explain the situation outside. Ryan was naturally willing to satisfy the little wish of these poor souls, so he took two chairs from the space bag and sat down with Hermione one by one, and then began to talk about them from the previous magic history textbook and eat the history of the wizarding world over the past 1000 years seen in the collected data. Talked for more than three hours in this lecture. Even if the whole explanation was in turn with Hermione, Ryan felt that his voice was extremely dry. Fortunately, after the final lecture, these ghosts stayed there because they received too much information in one breath. He also took the opportunity to take two cups of honey and mint herbal tea from the space bag and give Hermione a cup. It wasn't until the two men finished the herbal tea that the souls of these wizards slowly quieted down. After that, the soul of the old wizard who had been the representative of the exchange with Ryan once again came out and asked them. Can you tell me what arrangements you have for us undeads? We will send you to where the dead should go, Ryan said. After all, the world belongs to the living, you are not suitable in this place. That's good. The old man nodded his soul. In our time, there were countless evil guys who liked to enslave souls, especially the souls of wizards like us. We are very lucky to meet young, powerful and kind wizards like you too. After speaking, the old man's soul nodded slightly. Then the souls of all the wizards present reached out of their chests and took out a small ball of table tennis sized fog. Then they threw the ball together. These small began to spread out slowly after flying out, and the corners also appeared and finally turned into A4 sheets of grey smoke. All the A4 paper slowly gathered together under the leadership of the leading old wizard, and finally became a book of soul state. I heard that in the long time, many wisdoms from ancient times have been completely forgotten www.mtlnovel.com So, in order to thank you for your help, we all took out all the knowledge we have mastered in this book. I think that powerful wizards like you can definitely get enough nutrition from them. Thank you. Ryan and Hermione performed an ancient wizard etiquette at the same time. After that, Ryan took out a rosewood box filled with cinnabar spells from her arms and collected the soul state book. We will sort out this knowledge bit by bit and pass it on to the appropriate wizards. After completing the communication, Hermione held Ryan's hand to resonate with the magic of both sides, and then used this powerful magic to arouse the power of the undead black scripture and the solar golden scripture. In two moments, golden and black light spewed out from the two books, forming an ancient Greek style gate with two colors in the air. At the center of the gate is a tumbling black mist which hides a strong death force. But unexpectedly, this power of death is not evil, but gives a feeling of tranquility. Is this behind the world of the dead? As the dead undead, the ghosts of these wizards soon learned the purpose of this door. They floated salute one by one from Ryan in front of them, then held their heads up across the gate. After more than 300 souls left, the door flashed in the air and disappeared completely. At the same time Hermione fell into Ryan's arms. You are still in a hurry. Lane whispered after turning the chair into a recliner and supporting Hermione. It's still too reluctant for you to open that door now. Chapter 728, Return. Hermione lying on the recliner appeared weak, so she listened quietly to Ryan's chatter, while sipping her bottle of soul nourishment that Ryan had just removed from the space bag. This specially made potent tonic has a bad taste so Hermione's face shows a slightly distorted expression after every sip. Do you know it's hard to drink? After watching Hermione drink all the facial features on her face to be squeezed together, Ryan unconsciously reached out and touched Hermione's hair, but this time Hermione was weak and not flashing like before, only staring at Ryan uncomfortably. Don't look at me like this. Ryan then whispered, you can use ordinary requisition magic to let those dead souls go to where they should go, and the result is to choose to open the door connecting the two worlds. Be aware of the ability to open the magic that communicates the gates of the two worlds is still somewhat reluctant for you now. Even if I provide you with magic power, your soul can hardly withstand the positive impact of the power of death. Of course I know. After drinking the special potion, Hermione quickly recovered a small part. She rolled her eyes first and moved Ryan's hand touching her hair like a cat and then said, that's not because you are by my side, I believe you can help me do this magic, after she saw Ryan's face, she found that Ryan didn't say anything, and then said, after this magic is performed, I feel that my understanding of the power of death has taken a big step forward, which is very conducive to my next growth, if you say that I forgive you this time, Ryan said with a soft sigh, but next time you want to do this, you better tell me, don't be like this time, the decision was made temporarily, well, I will inform you in advance next time, Hermione nodded and said that she knew the matter, and then whispered as she looked at Ryan checking the back of the entire cave. Of course, in order to be able to follow your footsteps, sometimes risk is necessary. After searching the entire cave, Ryan found that there was nothing in this place. However, traces on the ground and walls prove that this place used to have many decorative things, such as metal plates or certain tapestries. But when withdrawing, 
These easy-to-carry decorations should be taken away completely. After watching Hermione's body recover almost, Ryan left a lot of alchemy puppets to restore the place to its original state, and then returned to the manor with Hermione. After destroying the stone ball, all the magic effects in this place completely disappeared. Only some stone remains that are of no research value from a magic point of view. Did anyone come to us recently? After returning to the manor, Ryan ran over to help them get their clothes and asked Mr. Kiao. Also, how are the three ladies we sent before? Recently, no unauthorized personnel approached the manor. Mr. Kiaozu said, the three ladies have been living in the guest rooms of the annex building after entering the manor. The lady once went to the yard for a bit of activity, but went back again in ten minutes. Of course, their current state should be fairly normal. Mr. Kiaozu paused and added, because the improved life reconnaissance device on my body shows that although their bodies are slightly weak, they are still relatively healthy. I see, Ryan nodded and ordered. Please tell them that Hermione and I will visit their current residence after lunch. By the way, don't give a verbal notification. You'd better prepare a formal card. Understood, sir. The two cameras on the skillful robot compare a V shape, and then said, My system stores a full set of wizard etiquette rules, and I will definitely not be rude. Which etiquette and regulations? Next to Hermione looked a little ignorant. I remember the robots at home have never been asked to store these things. Where did you learn from? Madame, this is your order. At Christmas time, Mr. Kiyozu pointed at Hermione with his camera and said, Mr. Black sent a lot of books about housework at that time. You asked us to record all the contents of these books that we can operate. One of them is the Witch's Etiquette Handbook. It turns out so, you go to work now. Hermione sent the gentleman away and turned to Ryan. Syrian Sirius used a temporary space bag that we used to deliver medicine to the Ministry of Magic. A whole bag of books, and the attached letter said that they were some of their family's books about home life and they were just given to us. I read a few books that I found to have recipes and threw them to the robots. No I thought it was mixed with things like etiquette manuals. It's normal. This gift must have been given by Sirius alone. He probably can't stand the bottles and cans at home. This time, we can give us these things that we are likely to use. Speaking with a shrug, because it was still a few minutes before dinner, Ryan first checked the letter that he had just received this morning. The letter was sent by the gorillas. They attacked and completely destroyed an alchemy workshop of those pure blood in Cornwall yesterday. In the process, they killed a Death Eater and no one was there, injured. Ryan immediately wrote a reply to them, which first praised the fruitful results of the gorillas' multiple attacks in the past half a month, especially since they used a kind of enhanced wildfire that Ryan configured to burn down. The act of bringing two Death Eaters outside half of the Gulinj Tower forced Voldemort to shrink the frontline personnel to strengthen protection in some key areas. In addition to his praise, Ryan also suggested that these gorillas temporarily retreat from the southern area and return to the north for a few days. After all, Seven attacks in half a month made the players now very tired, and all kinds of magic props were also consumed. At the same time, the gradual tightening of defenses in the south has also increased the risk of attacks exponentially. Tilda www.mtlnovel.com Ryan didn't want this group of followers that he could finally raise to be consumed. After sending the letter from the manor, Lane and Hermione had a lunch together. As for the two magic wand makers, according to the reports of Mr. Kiyosu, they almost did not have meals on time. After every meal, they were busy and let these robots help them to the dining room. It took only half a month for the two masters to add up to less than ten meals in the restaurant. I have to say that many things in the magic world are really wonderful. Some problems that ordinary people can't solve are very easy for wizards to solve. Therefore, unhealthy lifestyles like these two wand masters who eat completely irregularly, or Dumbledore's intake of sugar, did not bring bad consequences to their bodies. After sighing about the magic of magic, Ryan and Hermione changed their formal clothes and walked through the manor's small garden to the double-story building on the side. Anyway, Mr. Greengrass's death was related to them. So some things have to be said sooner or later. Knocked on the door, and Mrs. Greengrass in black opened the door. After seeing them, Mrs. Greengrass greeted calmly and led them to the living room. Ryan once told the robots at home to meet the material requirements of the three mothers and daughters of Greengrass as much as possible. They didn't need anything other than school supplies and everything in the room remained the same as before. Chapter 729, Meet Mrs. Greengrass Ryan after they came to the living room with Mrs. Greengrass, a gentleman floated out from the side and poured a cup of black tea for each of the three people, in an awkward silence. Finally, Mrs. Greengrass broke this embarrassment. Is there anything to come to me as soon as you come back today? Mrs. Greengrass said quietly. If it is about our contract, I would like to say that my husband was indeed killed, but I assure you that as long as there is one person in our family, the contract between us will continue to be fulfilled. No, it's not this. Hermione was somewhat entangled, but finally said. After all, Mr. Greengrass was killed because of us, so we think, is this mercy? Mrs. Greengrass interrupted Hermione. You are much kinder than I thought, and I know that if I now admit what you say, you will get a lot of benefits, which is indeed very attractive. 
But what I need to tell you is that although my husband's death is related to you certain relationship, but it is actually doomed. Doomed. Why is that? Lane frowned when she heard Mrs. Greengrass, because it seemed to him that Voldemort had chosen a way to infringe the interests of the Greengrass family, and then Mr. Greengrass contacted him in order to resist. However, at the last moment, a flaw was discovered because of the lack of action, which led to a series of subsequent events. But now Mrs. Greengrass's sentence seems to be saying that the whole thing was planned by Voldemort from the beginning, which caused Ryan's curiosity. He wanted to know what happened behind this. Hermione this time. Things look like this as Ryan and Hermione stared at themselves curiously. Mrs. Greengrass slowly said everything that happened that day. After the original action was scheduled, Voldemort sent several foreign employed wizards to the Greengrass house on the grounds that the operation was kept secret, and Mr. Greengrass naturally had no reason to keep these people out. After these people entered the manor, they did not live in the manor's room, but wandered around the manor every day, and every three or five days these people changed classes with a new wizard. This should be the three people we killed when we started, Hermione said to Ryan with the Phoenix brand. It seems that those people don't know the whole plan of the mysterious person, or that the mysterious person used their death to determine us. Fooled. You are right, Ryan replied in the same way. A very simple way as long as these people do not respond within the prescribed time. The mysterious person knows that we have gone there. For the mysterious person, this for the black wizard, it is well worth being able to use human life to master certain important things. Mrs. Greengrass did not know the secret communication between Ryan and Hermione. After talking about the previous events, she began to describe what happened in the manor on the day of the incident. Because that night was the time for Mr. Greengrass to perform his task, the Greengrass family had finished lunch early in the day and sat in the living room to rest. As a result, Someone came to visit at the door at 2 or 3 in the afternoon. It was 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and we found that the Parkinsons suddenly came to visit us, although we felt a little strange at the time. As world friends, we greeted them in. Speaking of which, Mrs. Greengrass was agitated at once. Because of the relationship between the two families, we greeted them to the living room as usual, and asked the house elves to serve them tea. As a result, Bellatrix disguised as Pansy Parkinson I killed my husband directly with a life-selling curse. Carrie, our house elf, had originally tried to stop her but was killed by another life-selling curse. This is terrible, Hermione sighed. She felt it was too bad to kill their father in front of a minor child. Fortunately, they had never met in the previous battle, have been to such a difficult problem. Yeah, it's really bad. Although Mrs. Greengrass was doing her best to maintain her emotions, Ryan and they found her eyes were red, and she was holding her head up and trying to keep the tears from flowing. After a few minutes passed, Hermione held the handkerchief and wiped away the tears in the corner of her eyes. Mrs. Greengrass finally controlled her emotions. She said in an angry tone, I did not think of doing the Parkinson family, with a century of friendship, actually provided cover for Bellatrix at this time and let the crazy woman kill my husband. That is to say, the Parkinsons were real at the time. Ryan finally knew why Mrs. Greengrass was so angry, knowing that traitors will always be more hateful than the enemy, and Mr. Greengrass was killed solely because of the traitors. Of, with the magical defense of this ancient pureblood family manor, even if Voldemort himself comes in, it will take about seven or eight minutes to rush in and this time is enough for them to issue an alarm to find reinforcements or escape from the secret passage. Yes, it was the Parkinson's who later stunned us with a coma spell, Mrs. Greengrass said, suppressing the anger in her heart. It was only later when my daughters and I were put in that tent that we all fell into the Dark Lord's calculations this time. Is this someone cheating you? Hermione asked. It is to create some kind of illusion to mislead others. For example, they want to mislead me by conveying some kind of wrong information to us. No. Absolutely impossible. This was what Bella told us at the time. She seemed to think that this was a great opportunity to promote the unparalleled wisdom of the Dark Lord. In this respect, Bella was absolutely impossible to lie. Mrs. Greengrass was absolutely decisive, said. And the news she said just confirmed something I hadn't thought about before. Hearing this, Ryan immediately made a gesture to continue. Mrs. Greengrass paused and then said, she first boasted of the Dark Lord's trust in her www.mtlnovel.com and then said that the Dark Lord always felt that our position was not firm it might be a traitor, so this time I used it exclusively this matter tested us. We turned out to be a traitor as the Dark Lord expected. Why does the mysterious man think you are unreliable and even come to test you? Lane asked. That's because many people around us have completely become slaves to the Dark Lord, Mrs. Greengrass said word by word. Because the Dark Lord's arrangements for my daughter's marriage and his order that we usually try to kill the muzz on the street. As a person who wants to protect the integrity of the family, we are opposed to this practice and these pureblood families complain very it soon reached the Dark Lord. Under the targeted investigation of the Dark Lord, I think my husband was actually exposed when Hogsmeade sent you the first letter. Mrs. Greengrass concluded that she looked to try and said seriously. But I can swear that at no time will my daughters and I blame the two of you. Why is this? Ryan asked. 
frowning. Although the mysterious man has set a trap on this, Mr. Greengrass death is strictly related to us. I have a hard time understanding why you have little resentment towards us. Seriously, at this time you I can understand whether it is forbearance or swearing at us, but I can feel that you really don't have that kind of hatred. That's because, this is already one of the best things we expected in advance. Mrs. Greengrass gave an unexpected answer. Chapter 730 Promise and purpose. Are you saying that the present situation is already the best expected? Hermione opened her eyes in disbelief. She couldn't understand that the family had passed away. Some families could not return, leaving only orphans and widows. How could the situation of the three men be considered the best by Mrs. Gregoras? It is indeed the best situation now, Mrs. Greengrass nodded. We used to think that we were dead this time. I think my husband should have told you what will happen if we do nothing. Yes, Mr. Greengrass told us at that time that if we do as the mysterious man said, then he is still dead and the glorious surname of Greengrass will be completely in history. For our pure blood family, the survival of the family is above everything else. For this goal, every family member can pay everything for it, including our lives, Mrs. Greengrass said with a serious expression too, and we choose to surrender to you can successfully save our family. But, madame, you need to know that even if you made the right choice, we cannot allow you, the pure blood families, to monopolize all your interests like now. Hermione said bluntly to Mrs. Greengrass, in this way, the mysterious person is actually more in line with the interests of the pure-blooded wizards like you who were previously dominant. Yes, but these need to be built on the premise of the Dark Lord's victory, Mrs. Greengrass said, spreading her hands and showing a weak smile. And in this war one don't like the Dark Lord, even if the Dark Lord has recruited more people and looks stronger than before, but we still don't like him. More powerful than before? Hermione turned her head to look at Ryan and at the same time asked through the phoenix branding that there was a sudden question in her heart. He obviously has lost most of his soul, but when he was reborn, he used black magic to reshape his body, which gave him a huge magical bonus. Ryan explained, in the use of black magic, the pure black magic body is indeed better than the mysterious people before. It is much better to use various dangerous black magic transformations. So from the combat level alone, he should be more powerful than last time. I'm glad you chose us now. After explaining to Hermione, Lane said to Mrs. Greengrass, Today we came to you on the one hand to tell you that we have converged Mr. Greengrass's body, and bury him with your house elves on the lawn of your manor. Thank you. Mrs. Greengrass sniffed and said, thank you for giving them a good place to settle. After the war, I will bury them in the family cemetery. In addition, no matter what the reason is, Mr. Greengrass sacrificed for our cause. So I hope to be able to do something for you, as long as reasonable requests we can agree. Hermione was beside speaking of the content that the two had discussed before they came. This is not pity but an equivalent exchange. I don't need anything, Mrs. Greenglass said, shaking her head. But I hope you can help my daughters so that they can maintain the reputation of the Greengrass family. Speaking of which, Mrs. Greengrass may feel that what she just said seems a little unclear, so she quickly added, Of course, this is not to hope that you will take care of them like a nanny, but just that you can provide some help to them and in the future, they will act as guides for them to enter the social world. Help will naturally help, Lane said, I will open up some of the knowledge I have collected to them and ensure that this knowledge is equivalent to the level of knowledge circulated within your pure blood family. Made such a commitment because of the need to consider that whatever the reason, their father's death was indeed inseparable from Ryan. As the first victim of his followers, how to treat his family has a demonstration effect. So Ryan does not want to leave a stingy impression on others. On the other hand, after the end of the war, Ryan will gradually release the control of this knowledge and slowly popularize them. Therefore, from a certain point of view, these things are not as precious as imagined. But this is still very valuable knowledge for the pure blood family, which can be commensurate with the sacrifices paid by the Greengrass family this time. However, another request made by Mrs. Greengrass made Ryan a little puzzled. Mom, can you explain what a social leader is? I'm really not sure about this. Oh, this is a story circulating within the pure blood family. At this point, Mrs. Greengrass suddenly looked upset and lifted her right hand to grab the collar of the dress. Sorry, please forgive me. I can swear to Merlin that there is absolutely no slight contempt for your lineage in the sentence just now. It doesn't matter, Ryan waved generously. We are born into ordinary families who are not magical at all. This is not a shame for us. Similarly, it is normal for some things not to be known, which is why I want to ask you this question. Thank you for your kindness. Mrs. Greengrass slightly owed her upper body to express her gratitude. Ryan can understand why she is so neurotic. When working under the hands of Voldemort's mentally serious and obviously violent guy. He is either out of Stockholm Syndrome or terrifiedly nervous like Madame Greengrass. Dot. Next, Mrs. Greengrass detailed what Ryan had to do once they were the leaders of the social circles of the Greengrass sisters. In fact, it is very simple to sum up, that is, to other people in a suitable social occasion. It's enough to introduce two sisters, 
In fact, this is a way for those pure blood wizard families to divide their power. The guidance of the social circle chosen by a family often shows the strength and tendency of this family. www.mtlnovel.com For example, Bellatrix and Dragules, two leaders in the social world, were Voldemort. This even caused the Death Eaters to be jealous of the Black family. After figuring out what the leader of the social world is, Lane directly agreed to Mrs. Greengrass' request. After all, the situation of the war can now see the dawn of victory and he needs to consider things after the war. In order to achieve true lineage equality, Ryan, on the one hand, gives different grades of knowledge according to the different contributions, and improves the overall level of hemp wizards and mixed race wizards, while giving equal status and equality to those who contribute to the werewolf wizards opportunity. On the other hand, it is to eliminate part of the stubborn pure blood wizard, unite and restrict the other part. In this war, Ryan realized that the pure blood wizard was impossible and could not be completely eliminated. Therefore, he must ensure that the power of these pure blood wizards is limited to a range after the war, rather than completely blocking all the ascending channels of non pure blood wizards. Just like after the victory of the war in the original text, most of the final results were still taken by a pure blood family like the Weasley family, and this is what Ryan tries to avoid now. Therefore, Ryan believes that some pure blood families under their control must stay, and even need to give some funding to help their vision reach a certain level. In this way, a delicate balance can be maintained to ensure that enough time is given to cultivate a new generation of hemp seed and mixed blood wizards, and finally achieve the purpose of crushing the absolute dominance of pure blood wizards in the British wizarding community for thousands of years. Chapter 731, Better Situation After talking with Mrs. Greengrass, Lane and Hermione returned to the main building of the manor for them. Half a month after leaving the manor, they now have a lot of things to do, not much time wasted on other things. They now have a lot of things to be busy. These things include but are not limited to the production of potions and props, the training of some followers, and discussing some of the current situation with the Hogsmeade Department of Magic and the Principal Dumbledore. The best news recently is that in the last few months Ryan's persevering strategic destruction of the economic strength of the Voldemort side was suppressed to a very low level, especially after at least 80% of the estates and workshops belonging to those pure-blood families were completely destroyed. The Gulling Pavilion in the United States could not afford such losses and chose to withdraw from the United Kingdom, which also made Voldemort's economic chain serious. The problem, naturally, Voldemort, who has been disturbed by various attacks, has no energy and no power to find those Americans. In this case, they even need to pay a sum of money from the already small budget to the Americans to make up for part of their losses, so that the Americans will not fall in the direction of Hogsmeade. One of the main reasons for Voldemort's current embarrassment is that the Gulling Pavilion in the United States is a private institution. They can cooperate with the U.S. Magic Congress to perform some tasks, but if they are not profitable or even need to lose money, they cannot make sacrifices, let alone once after really angering wizards of the ranks of Ryan or Dumbledore, it is likely that the loss is not just money. Therefore, the wizards in the United States are now adhering to the idea of being able to scavenge the British magic world as much as possible and began to ask Voldemort's side for money to make up for their losses by threatening the Hogmore Ministry of Magic. Dot. And the Death Eaters naturally saw the Americans' thoughts. However, in order to prevent the Americans from suddenly changing their camp to Hogsmeade and causing a large-scale collapse of their own side, Voldemort can only choose to swallow this bitter fruit. The mysterious man now began to demand that his surrenders surrender his wealth. A medium-sized black wizard organization from Albania angered the mysterious man because he wanted to leave with the money earned. As a result, Everyone in the entire organization was executed on the spot. Hermione's eyes widened as she looked at the intelligence from the Order of the Phoenix. Don't he know that if everyone comes to him, except for someone who is extremely loyal like Bella, he will feel rebellious against him. I think the mysterious man has little soul left now, but he should also know that these things he does are very bad in the long run. Ryan spread his hand. However, the biggest difference between wizards and ordinary people is that strength is the most important thing for wizards. Mysterious people are confident that even if they don't have a penny, they will be able to turn their wallets into their own through powerful strength. It's not just a wallet. Hermione turned to the next page, and then pointed to a passage, according to an observer report in Diagonale. The mysterious man led people into the Gulling Pavilion and killed more than a dozen. The blocking goblin, and then moved away a lot of money and treasures. The Gulling Pavilion in Britain is a huge loss. Those losses in wealth are just trivial things. Know that the core of the bank is credibility, and now Gulling Pavilion has lost their credibility. Even if the wealth can be recovered after the war, Gulling Pavilion will not recover status. Ryan was not too surprised by Voldemort's move, because his actions were completely within Ryan's expectations. Gulling Pavilion was established by the goblins after their defeat. On the one hand, it is to appease the goblins and avoid the periodic goblin rebellion. On the other hand, it is to order the goblins to provide financial services for the wizards for free and create wealth for the wizards. But the fairies are naturally not the objects that the wizards plunder like domestic elves. Over the years, they have accumulated a lot of wealth through various financial means. At the same time, 
They naturally learned to collaborate with the pure blood wizards who had power in the Ministry of Magic, and used the wealth in exchange for protection from the Ministry of Magic when they grabbed money. This way of wielding money all over the place gave the fairies countless wealth and at the same time wiped out their will. Especially the fairies are long-lived species, but their lifespan is limited. Now the new generation of goblins have not experienced war, so the courage to fight in the past is also very little. Therefore, after Voldemort murdered Liwai, these goblins naturally chose to succumb. For standard bloodline discriminators such as Voldemort, as well as the hemp wizards who are humans, they are considered lower creatures, not to mention these are not human creatures. In his eyes, fairies and house elves are nothing. The difference should be the slaves of pure blood wizards. Therefore, he naturally does not care about any influence and directly takes out the wealth he thinks should belong to him. This is also some kind of good news. After shock, Hermione said in a narrative tone. The pureblood family had monopolized the entire financial industry of the wizarding world before, and now the mysterious person the two strikes almost completely destroyed the credibility of the goblins, so that after the war, Hogsmeade's British United Wizarding Bank replaced Gulling Court and basically became a foregone conclusion. That is to say, the mysterious man helped us remove one of the biggest obstacles in taking control of the British financial. Here, Hermione stood up and said excitedly, Gulling has always been a neutral institution and the goblins hardly participated in the civil war of humanity. So I have been worried that if those pureblood families rise quickly with the help of the Gulenge after the war, our war is equivalent to fighting now. Absolutely not white, you are too worried, Lane comforted, because they don't have enough manpower to support even if they have money. After we provide enough jobs, those hemp breed wizards don't need to feed themselves through the pureblood family. The pureblood family itself has very few people. This time, we have cleared a part of it again, and it will take a long time for the rest to restore their current level. You're right. I did think too much. Hermione paused and took out a letter from the bottom of the pile of letters. Yes, here is the principle from Dumbledore. Our letter. He hopes that it is best for us and he to inform each other of the course of action to avoid accidental injuries caused by both parties in the chaos. This is a good idea. Lay nodded. The sudden attack between us and the Order of the Phoenix is often chosen at night. This kind of situation where we don't know what to see and we are very nervous. If we really choose the same attack target, it is really easy for us to fight first www.mtlnovel. Com, but it is also very simple to solve. Ryan thought of the little toy brought by the 101st Airborne Division Normandy during World War II. I'll make a batch of badges first. As long as the badges are close to each other, they will glow or vibrate. So every time the expatriates only need to bring two, they don't need to worry about accidental injuries. The next life entered the step-by-step -step way, on the one hand, because after a long attack, Ryan destroyed 80% of the target and nearly 90% of the Southern Pure Blood Wizard's production capacity. As the number of destroyed places increased, the number of places where Death Eaters needed protection decreased, and each of the remaining points was guarded by a lot of Dark Wizards. In this case, if you want to continue to attack, it is actually difficult to guarantee that you can achieve almost no loss like now. On the other hand, it may be that after the war began, their persistent attacks on Lord Voldemort had caused too much damage, so in the recent period, Voldemort and the Ministry of Magic in London have also been much quieter. It seems that it is because of strength, insufficient and a strategic contraction, so Ryan couldn't find too many goals. In short, such a boring and monotonous life was only broken by a letter from Hogwarts in mid-April. This letter was mailed by Dumbledore, and he invited Ryan to Hogwarts to discuss some important things. It seems that this boring life is finally over, Ryan said after waving the letter to Hermione, who was sitting by the side drinking tea. Maybe this war is coming to an end. Chapter 732 Meet. Although the temperature in the UK in April is still a bit low, it is not so cold at least in sunny places. Stepping on the golden sunlight sprinkling on the ground, Lane and Hermione walked into the gate of the Hogwarts courtyard together. There are still patrols patrolling here, but it may be the reason Dumbledore had commanded in advance. These patrol members directly opened the door for them after they found Ryan's figure. Nice to meet you, Hello. Lane recognized the man who was patrolling the school entrance today. Aren't you still working in the shop? Why are you running as a patrol now? The town of Hogsmeade itself has prepared a civil defense team, and wizards like us who are capable of fighting naturally participated. After Ryan and they entered the door, Penlo tapped the iron gate with his wand. Under the influence of magic, the gate of the castle closed quickly. Penlo turned around and said to Ryan, The professional staff sent by the Ministry of Magic used to be stationed here. But recently, with the improvement of the situation, Hog the Maud Ministry of Magic intends to recapture some areas. So after discussing with the principal Dumbledore, the principal asked the professionals to go where they needed, and then let us volunteers maintain order here. What about the security? Hermione asked a few steps curiously. Know that Hogwarts is the main target of the Death Eaters. Are you still safe here? Of course it is very safe. Penlo flicked his hair gently. First of all, our squad is basically people you have trained. From a certain point of view, our fighting level is no worse than those of professionally trained ordinary strikers. You have to know that even Percy is magic, 
The training received by the Ministry is our level. They are also elite personnel under the Enforcement Department of Magic Law. Secondly, the war situation is slowly improving for us now. I believe there will be no enemy raids in a short time. Of course, we will not relax any vigilance at this time. Speaking of which, Penlo also burst a small identification badge from his clothes. For example, I know that you are real through this, of course, this is also because I believe that with the strength of you two, no one should be able to get a part of your body from your body to disguise. The last and the most important point. Penlo's face showed the proud look. Now behind us is Hogwarts Castle, where Professor Dumbledore sits. It is also the safest place in the British magic world. Even if the mysterious person comes in person, he will certainly not get any benefits from here. You're right, Hogwarts Castle, guarded by Professor Dumbledore, is indeed the safest place in the UK, Ryan said while looking at the huge and majestic castle in front of him. No matter what Dumbledore did when he was young, he did devote himself to the school and the students in the school for the rest of his life. And because of him, this castle became indestructible in everyone's eyes. Ah, yes. Professor Dumbledore is waiting for you in the principal's room now. After Ryan and the patrol members waved away and walked away for a while, Pinlow suddenly remembered something that said to Ryan, you just have to the door of the principal's room is sufficient. The stone monster statue that will open the door for you. Got it. Thank you sister. After waving again, Ryan and they walked down the road into the castle. It is different from when I came here a few times ago, it is just time for class now, so there is nothing in the corridor. Naturally they did not meet an acquaintance. What did you say that Professor Dumbledore called us all? Hermione asked strangely. Because they received Lupin's letter last night, in which Lupin told them that Professor Dumbledore also invited him today. I guess it may be for the current situation. Ryan analyzed. You see, we have recently narrowed the scope of the activities of the mysterious man and his Death Eaters completely to the center of London and their wealth and manpower has been compressed to a dangerous level. At this time, we should indeed discuss what to do next. When they came to the entrance of the principal's office, the two stone monsters really saw them, they jumped aside and gave way to the upward spiral staircase. After entering the Hogwarts principal's office along the stairs familiarly, Lane discovered that only Professor Lupin was standing on the carpet by the fireplace, but the principal was missing. I also just arrived here. Dumbledore left a message saying that he had something to go out in the morning. Let's wait here for a while. Luping pointed to a box on the corner of the table. He also left us the snack box so that we can eat it casually. Professor Lupin, after listening to what Professor Luping said, he stepped forward and hugged Professor Lupin, and then greeted him. It's been a long time since I saw you. Why did you come so early today? But we also set off after breakfast, but did not expect it to be later than you arrived. That's because yesterday I arrived in Hogsmeade with a group of wolves who went to Hogsmeade for shifts. This morning I ate a sandwich and drank a cup of coffee and came straight in. Lupin said, looking at Ryan, and then said very seriously, Thank you very much for killing Fenra Greyback, although as your professor I should not say this. Well, this is just what I did smoothly in the battle. After all, it was a battle at the time, and Greyback was my enemy. It was an inevitable thing for me to kill him not just for you. Luping said equally seriously. After all, Luping is a good person who likes to consider for his friends, he does not want Luping to have too much psychological burden in this matter. Of course, of course, I all know. Luping smiled and patted Ryan's shoulder. Anyway, the love I owe you may not be over in my life, and I don't care so much. Just as the two were talking, the door opened again, and Miss Burns, the Minister of Magic, walked in. Tilda www.mtlnovel.com she saw Lupin and patted Ryan's shoulder and asked with a smile. What are you talking about? It's fun to watch it. Ah, we are talking about the situation before you. After all, we have been busy because we haven't seen each other for several months. Lupin immediately digressed and talked about it. After all, it's better not to be in front of such a murder the Minister of Magic said, even if it was because of war. You're right, you really haven't seen each other for a long time. Miss Burns nodded slightly and then changed a few chairs in the office to let everyone sit down. After sitting for a few minutes and discovering that Professor Dumbledore had not arrived, she took the initiative to ask Lupin, how is Tunks recently? I heard that she is pregnant, and the birth of a new life at this time is for us it's very good news. Yes, now the mother and the children are very healthy. Lupin's face seemed to shine here, and the whole person looked younger. If I guess correctly, the child will be born this month. Nice to hear the good news. After Lupin had just finished speaking, Dumbledore's voice suddenly rang. Ryan looked up and saw that the door above the staircase of the principal's office opened, and Professor Dumbledore came out of it. Various kinds of good news have arrived recently, which is simply great. President Dumbledore is good. Albus, good morning. Professor Dumbledore, good morning. Watching Professor Dumbledore walk down the stairs, they all stood up and greeted each other. Good morning, you guys, Dumbledore said as he walked behind the desk and sat down then pressed his hands down to signal everyone to sit down. I came to you today to discuss the next move. Chapter 733, for London. Today I called you all because I think it is time to discuss the next actions. After all, 
the situation is much better than before the war broke out. It can even be said that we have reached an important turning point. After sitting on the chair, Principal Dumbledore first spoke out the goals of today's meeting. Yes, Principal Dumbledore, Miss Burns echoed. According to the statistics of our Ministry of Magic, in the most recent week, there have been no more cases of muzzle sorcerers harmed across the UK, except in the Greater London area. Death Eaters and members of the Ministry of Magic in London has also been greatly reduced. This is indeed good news. Professor Dumbledore nodded and then showed a serious expression. But I don't think Voldemort will just take it, even if he suffered huge losses before. Speaking of which, Dumbledore glanced at Ryan and Hermione, and then went on to say, especially according to my calculations, even if he had lost a lot of manpower and material resources in the confrontation with us before, he still has control there is a force no less than one third of the heyday. This means that Voldemort's contraction is not due to insufficient strength but is planning a conspiracy that we do not know. Professor Hermione gestured with her hand, and after asking Dumbledore's permission, she asked, why wouldn't this be the mysterious person trying to resist thoroughly in London? Now the ordinary people in London are all their hostages. With the city of London, a place where we can't use powerful magic to attack on a large scale, he can cause us huge losses. In addition, I believe that after the recent series of failures of the mysterious man and the oppression of his subordinates, there will not be too many people who are still willing to follow him faithfully. In this way, with such a group of half-hearted it should be no problem if the guy wants to hold a certain place, but if I want to mobilize these people to take the initiative to attack, I think it is too difficult. You're right, Miss Granger. If Voldemort is a normal person, he would do it like this. After listening to Hermione's analysis, Dumbledore nodded, but he was never that kind. People who follow the rules, or since I knew Voldemort, he has always been used to get everything he wants by any means. It is definitely not what he wants to be stuck in London to fight a defensive battle. I think that Voldemort's current plan should be to use all the forces he can control to launch a powerful raid, and then completely reverse the current battle situation, and even win the war in this battle. Finally Professor Dumbledore concluded, Principal Dumbledore, do you have any evidence to prove it? Miss Burns stood up nervously, and the whole person looked very uneasy. This is because the wizards who are currently on the front line are the Ministry of Magic. According to Professor Dumbledore, those members of the Ministry of the Front should now be in a very dangerous situation. Amelia, there is no need to be so nervous. Dumbledore also noticed Miss Burns' uneasiness. He extended his hand and made a depressing gesture to signal her to sit down, and then said, according to Voldemort's character he shouldn't directly attack the arrows on the front line, because attacking arrows would lift our siege on London at most but London is not important to him, I don't think Voldemort will take only of resources are invested in such things. What are the mysterious people doing now? Miss Burns frowned. If they haven't broken our current siege of London, what is the reason for the so much power gathered in the hands of the mysterious people? This, I don't know. Principal Dumbledore shook his head helplessly. But what I am sure now is that the wealth and resources that Voldemort obtained before have not been transported back to any place we know. At the same time, several core death eaters under Voldemort's staff, such as Bellatrix of it hasn't appeared in front of people for a long time. You are right, Dumbledore. Mrs. Burns also added, our intelligence staff at the Ministry of Magic in London also reported on this matter. They said that some mysterious people have been inserted in the Ministry of Magic recently. The frequency of occurrence has been much smaller than in the past, and even some important people have been absent from work for a long time. Listening to the conversation between Dumbledore and Miss Burns, Ryan can now be sure that Voldemort should have gathered a lot of the most loyal manpower and enough resources to plan but he can't guess the specific situation. After all, the plot has changed so much now that he really can't judge Voldemort's idea at this time. So he subconsciously looked at Principal Dumbledore, because he knew that Snape now accepts the dispatch of Professor Dumbledore lurking around Voldemort, and as Voldemort's confidant, Snape should theoretically preach to Dumbledore some information. Except for Ryan, everyone in the room also looked at Principal Dumbledore. After all, Mr. Principal is the greatest white wizard in Britain. At this time, Principal Dumbledore naturally became the hope of everyone. But President Dumbledore didn't seem to get any useful news now. Looking at everyone's hopeful eyes, he seemed helpless. Voldemort's secrecy work has been very good this time. It seems that anyone involved in his plan has been controlled. Even a close friend like Bella hasn't seen them recently. That's terrible. Miss Burns frowned. Because Voldemort was in a state of being unexcited, and no one knew what his next purpose would be, that is, any place, anyone. Everyone may become the target of Voldemort's next attack. Then what should we do? Principal Dumbledore, Liu Ping issued the common question in everyone's heart, is it necessary to take everyone back and then defend all our locations? No, it can't be this way, Ryan directly objected. If we withdraw people, it is equivalent to giving up all the previous results and letting the mysterious people get enough time to trim. In this way, we may need to pay more for wanting to obtain such advantages again. Dot. Ryan is right. Hermione added, as President Dumbledore said just now, 
The mysterious person has always tended to take advantage of the excess to take advantage of it. www.mclenovel.com This is the case for making Horcruxes, dangerous transformation of his body, and now his plan I think it is no exception. He concentrated so many manpower and resources absolutely to gamble big one in order to completely reverse the situation. That's right, Miss Granger. Dumbledore nodded, then glanced at everyone in the office. Now passively waiting for Voldemort's attacks will have no effect other than consuming our resources and strength. Instead, it will let the initiative that already belonged to us change hands again, letting the hope of victory near us slip away quietly. And this everything may be what Voldemort wants us to do. So I hope you now mobilize all the people to prepare for the attack on London. Anyway, it is our most important goal at this stage to remove Voldemort's last public stronghold. This is also preventing him from dragging the war on. The best solution. No problem. We will do our best. Please rest assured. Principal, the others in the office nodded one after another to agree with Principal Dumbledore's opinion, because they also knew that what they do now is better than nothing. Do better. In the following time, everyone began to discuss the deployment of various forces. After a brief discussion, everyone decided to stop all non-essential actions in order to be able to draw a part of their strength to reinforce the London front line while defending these current points, in order to recover London in the shortest possible time Ministry of Magic and a series of locations. Just after everyone finished discussing the deployment of the war, Dumbledore cleared his throat. Today, in addition to talking about combat-related topics, there is something to be discussed about post-war reconstruction. Chapter 734, Corporation The sun in April shone through the glass windows into the Hogwarts principal's office, and everything in the office was extremely bright. The gloomy feeling of the old castle that used to be in the whole house was swept away. Now the war situation is as exciting for Ian as it is today. So, with this gathering time, everyone in the principal's office started to discuss the arrangement of many things after the war. After all, this war has completely torn the entire British society, so there will be a lot of things to deal with after the war. So when the dawn of the battle is already showing, Ryan and they now need to make some general preparations in advance. In this way, you can avoid making mistakes and causing unnecessary losses after the war has truly won. Fortunately, the experience of the last war, so the handling of war criminals and the reconstruction of the post-war series of things do not need everyone to discuss. As long as you follow the cases left over in the past, you just need to follow suit. At most, there are more criminals who need to be tried this time. Everyone needs to invest more energy in the trial. So there is nothing to discuss. But beyond that, there are some situations that have never happened before, such as the United Witcher Bank. Its existence will surely break the current financial monopoly of Gulink on the British wizarding world. Obviously, Professor Dumbledore also noticed this. So after planning the plan for the London offensive, the first post-war question discussed was about the United Witcher Bank of Britain. Now, the first thing we have to discuss is about the status of the United Witcher Bank after the war, Dumbledore said after looking at the others in the room. Of course, I also invited Mr. Xanduosu, president of the bank, to discuss this issue with us today. After that, Professor Dumbledore released his own guardian deity of Phoenix. The silver patron saint flew around the office and sank directly into the wall. A few minutes later, a fairy and chubby figure pushed open the door and came in. Good morning, nice to meet you. After entering the door, Xanduosu held his claws together and raised them to his chest then leaned forward slightly to salute everyone. Several people in the office stood up and returned their salute to the pandarin in their own way. Ah, Mr. Xanduosu, please sit down. Professor Dumbledore got up from his chair and spoke exclusively in Mandarin, and then waved his wand and turned into a chair as large as a sofa next to them. Under, Mr. Principal, may I ask what happened to you when you came to me today? Xanduosu said with a simple smile on the bear's face. But if there is a heavenly alchemist here, he will definitely know this pandarin absolutely found a good opportunity to make money and now he is using his race-specific advantages to find ways to reduce the vigilance of negotiating opponents. Of course, Dumbledore absolutely did not know this kind of thing, and because he devoted most of his life to education, he was not very good at this kind of business negotiation, so the principal said directly that he was looking for a panda this time. For what? Mr. Xanduosu, Dumbledore said, you know that we are about to win in this war, so we have to make some arrangements for post-war issues, and the most important one is about that one. Bank thing. I understand, Mr. Dumbledore. Xanduosa raised a paw. As a currency issuing bank, it certainly won't be in the hands of foreigners. So I think today you should want us to hand over control of the bank, right? Yes, this is the case. Miss Burns whispered. Xanduosa's directness made Dumbledore and Burns a little embarrassed, because then they seemed to be the kind of people who crossed the river and demolished the bridge after taking advantage of others in the most difficult times. Now it is time to reap the results but exclude others, but for financial independence of the British magic world, some things have to be done. That's good, 
I like people who are straightforward like you when I do business, Pandran said after patting his thigh with his paw. Actually, we have received domestic instructions. They think that this state is just now temporary measures in a certain emergency situation. We can give 28.1% of the shares to the British Ministry of Magic to help the British Ministry of Magic make up the shares to an absolute majority of 50.1%. Speaking of which, Sanduosu reached out and took a piece of roasted golden honey snack from the plate on Dumbledore's table and ate it, and then went on to say, because I prepared it before, we also help you in England people have cultivated a group of people. Now those who are in important positions can get started soon after your people are evacuated. It's so grateful. Miss Burns said excitedly, given the extent of the greed of the goblins before, she thought it would be difficult to get the bank back. But I didn't expect these pandering to talk so well, and even help them develop a group of technicians who can directly take over the bank. By the way, what price do we have to pay to get back these things? After a moment of excitement, Miss Burns reacted to a very important question because it was obviously impossible for such a large business to be given away in vain. It's simple. It only takes you 15% to increase the current market value of those shares that you handed over to us within two months. This includes all staff training costs and technology transfer costs. Xanduoso said, this requirement is not too high, it can even be said to be very conscious. Of course, Xanduoso did not lose. After all, the bank's initial investment was very small and the profit from the sale of the shares is now more than 20 times the cost at that time. And they can retain the remaining 21.9% of the shares to bring long-term benefits to their own. Not to mention that as the vanguards of the heavenly magic world going overseas, they succeeded in gaining goodwill from the British magic world and really established a foothold here. So this investment is very successful for Pandarin. Of course, of course, the prices you offered are very, very reasonable. Miss Burns said embarrassedly, but... We may not be able to withdraw so much money within the time you have set. Miss Burns is telling the truth. This half year of war has indeed put a huge financial burden on the Ministry of Magic, and all the bonds have been issued several times, in view of the fact that most of the money standing on this side has little money. More than 90% of these bonds were finally bought by Ryan at a discount of 10% or 5% of the nominal price with various materials and hard currency required by the Ministry of Magic. So Miss Burns embarrassedly said that after she had no money, she turned directly to look at Ryan, Mr. Liang, that you have to borrow money again. Ryan looked very generous. How many years do you plan to borrow this time? I think it may be www.mtlnovel.com 20 years. At this point, Miss Burns was even more embarrassed because the borrowed money was too much. The Ministry of Magic may not be able to pay off in a short time you borrowed money. So instead of being embarrassed that I can't afford the money at that time, I might as well choose a long one. The three-year interest rate is 4%. The five-year interest rate is 5% and the 10-year interest rate is 8%. Ryan asked himself the interest rate given by borrowing money before speaking out. If it is 20 years, what interest rate will you give? 13.5%, Miss Burns blurted out, and it seemed that she had discussed with the rest of the Ministry of Magic before coming. This interest rate is not low, but compared with the interest rate that the greedy goblins use to borrow from Gulling Pavilion, Lane is definitely a conscientious creditor. Of course, Ryan nodded and said to the bear duo soon next to him, that's it. Uncle Suo, I'll go to the bank with you and give you the money later. Miss Burns will also follow you sign the loan documents in the past. Very good, no problem. One bear at a time nodded, after finally confirming that the business negotiation was completed. Professor Dumbledore gently clapped his hand to summon a house self and then gave a few words. The house self nodded and disappeared. Soon the house self appeared in the office with a silver tray holding a wine bottle and a few glasses. Dumbledore opened the stopper with his wand and directed the wine bottle to pour all the glasses into the bottle of mead and then let the house self hand these cups to everyone in the office. To our successful corporation, cheers. Dumbledore smiled and raised the glass in his hand after watching everyone get the glass. Cheers. Chapter 735. Bank changes hands. After completing a series of discussions, the time came to noon. Ryan refused Professor Dumbledore's lunch invitation and left Hogwarts Castle together. After all, for Lion, they now have a lot of money to complete. Before completing this transaction, it is estimated that everyone involved in the transaction should have no appetite for eating. Soon they came to the door of the United Witcheress Bank of Hogsmeade, but the bustling crowd at the door really surprised the Lions and Mrs. Burns. The three-story building built in cream-colored marble was crowded at the door, and some the impatient wizard raised his purse over his head and jingled. Uncle Dusu, what are you doing here? Hermione asked curiously as the group of wizards arranged in line in front of the two bank staff. Why are there so many people queuing at the door of the bank? Is there anything in the bank that attracts them? Today this should be the first batch of government bonds issued by the Tanzhou Alchemy Federation in the UK, 
but I didn't expect so many people to buy it. Xun Tusu extended his paw and scratched his ear. Of course I think this may be because Gulling Court in the UK only provided financial custody services to most ordinary wizards in the past, so the wizards in the UK often lacked sufficient investment channels, and our public debt is just such consumption the desire is released. We had never queued so many people here before we issued the British Ministry of Magic Government bonds. Miss Burns' voice sounded on the side because most of the staff of the Ministry of Magic are from the Mull world, after many people found that the Ministry of Magic was short of money, they directly negotiated to contact the bank to issue our public debt, but very few people bought it. Dot. How could this be? Ryan asked, looking at Miss Burns curiously. Although he knew that few people had bought bonds the previous few times, he was not clear why the Ministry of Magic would just give up issuing bonds to the public this time. Plan to raise money but directly borrow money from yourself, because the Ministry of Magic's reputation is so bad now. Miss Burns smiled bitterly, especially after losing the Ministry of Magic in London. Even if you and Professor Dumbledore's full help help everyone still lack confidence in us. You also know that we almost didn't sell the first few public debts, and finally solved the problem with your generosity. And this 20-year public debt we are not optimistic about internally, so simply ask you to borrow money directly now. Seriously, Miss Burns. We are actually interested in the public debt of the British magic world. But you have too many restrictions on us, so we can only give up. Xunduza was a little wronged. The voice said. Of course I know that you are indeed friendly, especially in our darkest moments, and only you clearly supported us. Miss Burns quickly pacified this pandaren. But you know, this is bonds issued by the Ministry of Magic. We really have no way to allow foreigners to intervene too much in this regard, which is related to the independence of the British Ministry of Magic. Of course, I can understand this. Xun Duosu nodded, and Hermione asked through the Phoenix brand. Lane, why would the Ministry of Magic allow you to take over debt alone? They are not worried that you will control the Ministry of Magic. They must be able to guess this. So many people in the Ministry of Magic can't be so stupid that they can't even see this danger. Lane also replied through the Phoenix brand. But what can they do? Then Ryan followed Xandu Osu and they walked into the bank, explaining to Hermione, Don't forget my age and magic level, plus the followers we have and this war and more people who have a good impression on us people. The only professor in the British magic world who can compete with me is Professor Dumbledore who is over 100 years old. If I really want to control the Ministry of Magic, who do you think can stop it? So, the British magic world simply chose to believe in your character? Hermione paused, then moved on. Yes. A wizard who reaches your level can always lead the magic world of a country to his time. And you have not shown any anti-human and anti-social tendencies. For the British magic world, in Dumbledore Professor Ligero is likely to belong to your era afterwards, whether you borrow money from the Ministry of Magic or not, so they can take the money with confidence. After bypassing the gate and entering through a small door dedicated to the staff on the side, Ryan and they were taken to the reception room by a staff member. Xungwink Kai was already sitting on the sofa waiting for them at this time. After watching them enter, he took out a series of documents and put them on the table. All the equity transfer documents are here, Xungwink Kai said. Of course, in addition to the equity transfer documents, there are empty standard documents that can be used to sign the Ministry of Magic loan documents. Ah, thank you. Miss Burns took the document and sat down, then took out a pair of glasses from the robe and put it on. A few minutes later, the door of the reception room was knocked, and Percy and another hemp witch Henry Baker, who had been trained from the joke shop and joined the Ministry of Magic, walked in with a briefcase. Mr. Weasley, and Mr. Baker, it's a pleasure to see you. After the two ministry staff and everyone in the room greeted each other, Miss Burns greeted them to sit down and said, OK now, you come and look at these contracts to ensure that they can accurately express our meaning without any misunderstanding. Understood, Minister Burns. The staff of the two Ministry of Magic immediately sat down on the table after receiving the order, and then picked up the documents on the table and looked at it carefully. Ten minutes later they raised their heads together. There is nothing wrong with the file. That's good. Miss Burns nodded, took a quill from the ink bottle on the table, signed her name at the end of the document, and handed it to Ryan. After signing his name, Ryan handed the pen and paper to Xundu Osu, until everyone signed. Xundu Osu lit a candle and melted the paint. The lacquer soon melted www.mtlnovel.com Everyone put a lacquer on the contract with the seal they brought. It's just that except for Ryan's use of a private seal, the other two parties use official seals representing the bank and the Ministry of Magic. Okay, now the Ministry of Magic is the largest shareholder of this bank. Xundu Osu carefully checked the signature and seal, and said, as the largest shareholder, you have the right to appoint the manager of the bank and a standing deputy manager. Dot. We don't plan to change the manager in a short period of time, Miss Burns said, 
because the Ministry of Magic currently does not have the manpower to take up this position, and they feel that they have already taken too much from the pandering things, so not changing the manager for now is also a compensation for them who have always supported the Ministry of Magic forces. As for the current deputy bank manager, Miss Burns said after thinking for a while, now old Crouch has also been released from prison. His age is still some distance away from retirement, but he has returned to work at the Ministry of Magic. Not suitable. I think he can be asked to be the executive deputy manager. Ryan felt that Miss Burns had a very good choice. After all, old Crouch, as a person who was very promising to obtain the position of Minister of Magic, was certainly impeccable in his ability, and at the same time his serious to a rigid personality. It is indeed suitable as a supervisor in the bank sent by the Ministry of Magic. As for the previous case, it can be said that it was justifiable, and he has already accepted the punishment. So after Miss Burns said the candidate, Ryan and they agreed to this arrangement. Wish our business will be prosperous in the future. After dealing with all things, Sun Duosu smiled and blessed everyone. May Zhao Gongming bless us. Chapter 736, Secret Base. After returning from the bank that time, Ryan put all their power into the attack plan against London. After all, when Voldemort is nowhere to be found, the London guys are almost all the enemies they can find now. Of course. Ryan also knew that Voldemort was the core of the group of Death Eaters. If Voldemort is not killed, those Death Eaters will pop up from place to place. So in the next few days, Ryan took those followers into London many times in an attempt to find Voldemort's location. Even after Ryan was ready, he took several elite players and rushed directly into Diagon Alley, then slammed and attacked the four Death Eaters outside the Ghouling Pavilion. The Death Eaters were three dead and one injured. But even Ryan and they dragged the subdued Death Eater all the way from the Ghouling Pavilion to the Broken Cauldron Bar and did not see any Death Eaters jump out to block. Along the way, Lane also saw with his own eyes the Death Eater patrol that had been arranged in Diagon Alley. But the group of people looked at Ryan. They dragged a Death Eater and ran straight into Knock Alley without looking back. They didn't even see the captured companion. After returning to Hogsmeade with the captives, Ryan interrogated the captured Death Eater. It's a pity that this Death Eater is only a perimeter, and he doesn't know where Voldemort went. No way, Ryan and they could only send this Death Eater to the Ministry of Magic. However, the synthesis of the captive's confession and everything I saw in Diagon Alley today can prove that Voldemort has not appeared in public for a long time, and may even have left London. War is good, but Ryan remained extremely vigilant, because he knew that Voldemort and the forces he hid were just like the hidden viper that was ready to give everyone a fatal blow. In addition to Ryan, both Dumbledore and the Ministry of Magic are also looking for Voldemort's traces, but also found nothing. So where is Voldemort hiding now? Ryan's guess about Voldemort is correct, that is, he is indeed not in London with his core Death Eaters. In an inaccessible seaside hilly area in the north of Scotland, those looming under the mist are covered by a lush turf under a small mountain package, hiding secrets that almost no one knows. On April 26, Dumbledore announced that he would launch a general attack on London in a very short period of time. This is a very good thing which means that the battle against the Black Wizards in the UK has entered the final stage, and finally the time has come to defeat the mysterious man and all his lackeys. In this case, all personnel who resist the Dark Forces should join this counter-attack to closely and effectively cooperate with the main action of the Ministry of Magic. Thoroughly clean up the areas that have been recovered and rebuild their effective management institutions. Dot and work hard to restore most of the production before the end of the war. Oh, it's all bragging. The Great Dark Lord will surely defeat these dirty guys. You will never know the greatness of the Dark Lord. A witch who looked at the waxy face turned the British magic tossed into the fireplace, and then opened the door in the crackling of the burning wood and walked out of the room. Outside the room was a dark corridor, and only a few candles suspended in the air provided a little bit of poor light for the entire corridor. A door was lined up on both sides of the corridor, but there was almost no movement. The whole kind of gloomy feeling is not like a place where people live, but like a tomb in a grave. This seemingly hyperactive witch walked quietly in the corridor after going out. Even wearing boots with iron palms did not make a little sound in the stone corridor, as if a ghost was floating there. She stopped every time she reached the door of the room, and then listened quietly to the movement in the door. When she walked to a door, she opened her eyes suddenly, then pulled out her wand and blasted open the wooden door. Immediately after the explosion, the two people sitting at the table in the room stood up with fright, and on the table between them was a simple magic radio, with intermittent sounds. Death Eaters, you have reached the point of exhaustion. The defense in the city of London has completely collapsed and even our team can easily enter Diagon Alley to annihilate the Death Eaters and then come out. Block. And your master has left you alone? Even if we have a large-scale operation in London, he has no solution, like a mouse hiding in the sewer. With a bang, the radio hadn't finished talking about Jordan, and the radio was blown into pieces by a magic. Then the witch pointed angrily at the two trembling young men with a magic wand. How dare you listen to these how dare you? Drill your heart, drill your heart. The two young men immediately fell to the ground and curled up with a scream of sorrow. But the witch looked at them without a little pity, and instead increased the output of magic power. Crab, 
Flint, it is already a great gift for Lord Dark Lord to allow you to come here. You dare to listen to this? We dare not. Please spare us, Master Bella. The two young wizards wailed, but Bella didn't mean to relax. It wasn't until the wailing of the two people became inaudible that they gave up and continued to torture them. Remember, it's a glorious honor that you are brought here by Lord Dark Lord now. If you let me discover that you are doing these inappropriate things, it is not such a simple heart curse. Tyrax warned with a sharp voice. Yes, sir. Vincent Grab and Marcus Flint replied in a weak voice. But at this time Bellatrix walked straight out of this room, no longer looked down at the two people who twitched slightly in the room www.mtlnovel.com Although Bella looked down on these young wizards, she definitely wouldn't say something. Because young wizards like Vincent Grab and Marcus Flint were brought in under Voldemort's proposal. On the one hand, this is because there is not enough manpower. After the large-scale raid in the early stage, Voldemort was surprised to find that the manpower and wealth he possessed fell to an extremely dangerous level, so he needed to find all the resources he could find to complete his now this plan. On the other hand, after a series of actions and battles before, most of the people who are now standing on Voldemort's side have centrifuged him. The only reason he was still under his command was fear of Voldemort's power and cruel means. Voldemort was also aware of this matter, so for the confidentiality of the current plan, he now left all those who felt unreliable to London. Although young wizards such as Vincent Grab and Marcus Flint are weak, they are considered reliable personnel belts because their fathers are core Death Eaters and are killed in battle at the same time. Here, as Voldemort's most loyal subordinate, Bella even looked down on these weak and incompetent little wizards in his eyes. But she will never raise any objections to this practice. So after punishing the two guys she thought had done wrong, Bella, who came to the corridor, took a deep breath and adjusted a few expressions, then walked to the end of the corridor and pushed away door. An instant cold rushed straight into the corridor, causing Bella who had just opened the door to tremble. But she recovered quickly and walked down a dark tunnel in front of her. Chapter 737, Plan Bellatrix walked down the dark tunnel, and there was only a dozen meters of the niches in the black candle. The cold blue light like bellflowers could vaguely illuminate the downward stairs. Dot. But this is not static, as Bella steps down the steps, the surrounding temperature also rises a little bit. Five or six minutes later, the temperature around Bella had risen as hot as the sun in midsummer. After she walked down the last steps and turned a corner, the darkness in the tunnel was also driven out by a dazzling red light. Illuminate the entire tunnel like daylight. By this time, Bella's feet had become flat, moving forward along the smooth, mirrored stone floor, and soon she walked out of the tunnel under the small staircase and appeared on a platform. The platform is located on the wall of a huge tanking, just like the balcony on the palace. Standing on the platform, you can hear the sound of blasting and the collapse of the mountain from the cave below. Looking down from the edge of the platform, the most dazzling thing is a tumbling magma pool in the cave below. The tumbling magma illuminates the whole cave like the Sahara Desert at noon in midsummer. Many Death Eaters in black clothes and black robes are busy on the black platform by the lava pool. From time to time, some Death Eaters come in and out of the small holes on the wall, like a group of busy worker bees. Dot. Most Death Eaters' current job is to shoot a spell into the magma, to separate huge pieces of magma from the magma pool, and then transfer to the altar built in advance by the pool. The other part of the Death Eaters walked to the edge of the altar after the magma was suspended above the altar, and the same material in the hand was magically sent into these hot magma, waving the magic wand at the same time injecting a different magic power to these altars. As the Death Eaters released their spells, various colors of light slowly wrapped around the hot magma floating on the altar. The magma floating above the center of the altar began to slowly cool and shape under the combined effect of these magic powers and the materials previously put in. Become obsidian giants and monsters with different sizes and shapes. When Bellatrix walked down a boardwalk on the edge of the platform to the bottom of the cave, a two-story obsidian giant puppet had just been shaped, and from its dense bones and greasy face, it could be seen that this is a pure killing machine. At this moment, a Death Eater wearing a silver mask came up holding a brass lantern. As he approached, the surrounding temperature suddenly fell, and Bella even saw a white frost on the lantern and the thick leather gloves of the Death Eater. There was a baseball-like faint blue flame burning in the lantern. If you look closely, you can see countless wraiths trapped in the flames and silently wailing towards everyone around them, even if they are as powerful as Bellatrix. The Black Wizard can obviously feel the deepest cold in his body from the heart to the whole body after this lamp is close. The Death Eater carrying the lamp walked over the edge of the puppet made of equipment and raised the lamp above his head, then chanted the spell and used his other hand to hold a magic wand and drew a rune in the air. Dot. At the end of the last rune of the rune, a blue flame flew out of the lamp like an arrow from the string, obsidian puppets standing directly on the altar. As the flame sank into the puppet's chest, the whole puppet came to life in an instant and its joints and facial features burst out with a faint blue flame. At the same time, he raised his hair and made a growl. Very good, this should be a grade. Bella nodded to herself, and then watched the stone giant puppet walk into a tall cave under the heavy steps of another group of Death Eaters. It disappeared slowly. Bella, 
Come to the meeting room, there are important things to discuss. Just after Bella watched an obsidian giant be made, a black mist floated from a stone wall and sent Voldemort's password. The first time he received Voldemort's order, Bella immediately dropped to a cave wall and tapped with his wand. After a few knocks, the stone wall disappeared, revealing a deep cave. It's just that this cave is much more refined than other caves before, and the walls and floors can be seen carefully polished. After walking through a short corridor, she soon came to a wooden door and stopped then twisted the door handle without hesitation. There was only one person in the meeting room sitting at a stone table integrated with the ground, facing the door of the room. Apart from a huge golden chandelier on the roof, the whole house was empty and there was nothing at all. And very close to the person's right hand side, a huge viper was wrapped in a star-filled translucent sphere. Bella recognized that it was Nagini protected by a powerful protective spell. She was even a little jealous of the serpent because in recent times, its owner Voldemort had paid more attention to the serpent than any of their servants. Even if these servants add up, it seems that the serpent is not more concerned by the master. Bella, my most loyal servant. I'm sitting on my right hand now. A high, clear voice rang from the head of the table. I'm glad to see you here as soon as I heard my call. Bellatrix sat down at the designated position and waited quietly there. A few minutes later, another five or six figures in black robes came in then took her off the hood and sat on the table in turn. After the small stone table was full, Voldemort turned to look at the wizard sitting in the second position on his right hand and asked the first question in the meeting. Rodolphs, how are the undead obsidian golems prepared now? Master, you have ordered us to do our best to complete Rodolph. Less Strange had wanted to say a few words of praise after hearing Voldemort's question. But after seeing the eyes of Voldemort's snake, he immediately withdrew the words behind him and answered seriously www.mtlnovel.com The 5000 magic puppets you requested will be completed in three days, of which the A-level ones have been produced. 988 seats were produced, 1215 seats were produced in class B, and the rest were all in class C. It's still a little bit slow, Voldemort said, looking dissatisfied. I hope that tomorrow I will see all 5000 magic puppets built of which a class A must reach 1000. Master, now the magma pool has reached a limit, we, Arla Strange hadn't finished speaking, and Voldemort took out his wand and gave him a heart curse. I don't want to hear this kind of blame. If you don't, I don't mind changing someone. Less Strange, who fell close to the ground, said with a snake-like hiss, all in the room people shrank into their chairs, only Bellatrix looked at Voldemort with an admiring look, not even glancing at her husband who was wailing on the ground. Okay. If any one of you feels that you can't complete the task now, come up with it now. After straightening up, Voldemort looked at all the Death Eaters in the conference room and said, I can reduce your burden. The entire meeting room immediately became silent. After a few seconds of silence, Voldemort nodded with satisfaction. Very good, I hope everyone can complete the battle preparations tomorrow. I will lead you to completely reverse the situation in ten days, completely clean up those dirty guys and then recapture those who belong to us glory. Yes master. All the Death Eaters in the conference room immediately shouted with excitement, his face also showing excitement. We are willing to pay everything for you. Chapter 738, Plans and Requests. Encouraged by morale, Voldemort said to his men, now everyone else is going out to do their own business, Severus and Bella, you two stay, I have something to tell you. The Death Eaters in the room stepped back after hearing the words of Voldemort. One of the Death Eaters left and walked down to the ground, strange. After all the Death Eaters in the meeting room had left the room and closed the door, Voldemort waved his hands to the two of his most recognized subordinates to sit down, and then sat back in his seat again. Bella, tell me what's going on outside recently? After all three were seated, Voldemort looked at Bellatrix and asked, what are those dirty doing now? Their newspapers have been boasting that they have besieged us to a few places and even entered London. Bella said, because of the need for confidentiality, Voldemort and his followers came to this secret underground base in northern Scotland and never went out. All activities of everyone were confined to this small underground space. Dot. Naturally, Voldemort was trapped in this underground base and could not go anywhere, because only he can guarantee that no one in the base can expose all the information underground, or even directly escape from this underground secret base. Voldemort's strict management measures have been quite effective. Even Snape, the ace double-faced spy, has recently been unable to bring any news here to Dumbledore, which is why Dumbledore has recently lost his whereabouts to Voldemort. The reason to master, of course, hiding all Voldemort here does not mean that he wants to be a tortoise. Therefore, during this time, Bellatrix, Voldemort's most trusted subordinate, became Voldemort's size, often going out to see what is happening in various places. Oh, you're right. Those dirty descent guys and traitors did attack London. Voldemort smiled contemptuously and said, But this is only temporary, as long as we go out and defeat them, 
Everything will get better, Master, you're right, Bella said excitedly with wide eyes. We gathered the resources of the British magic world for thousands of years and organized an unprecedented army. Even the legendary Morgan Lefty has never had such a powerful force. Yes, this army is unprecedented. Voldemort was also excited by Bella's words. We will completely eliminate the dirty guys and create a clean, pure world belonging to our pure blood wizards. Make the wizarding world of Britain great again. Oh, Master, after shouting a slogan, Bellatrix then reported to Voldemort. According to the information I found a few times, Dumbledore will also be after their London raiders. Entering London, he will join the general attack on the Ministry of Magic. I heard some people say that Dumbledore hopes to reduce casualties. Yes, he always looks like this. Voldemort grinned. It is always hopelessly weak to reduce casualties, but it has never been known that this is what makes them weak. Are you right, Severus? Master, you're right. Snape, who had just stood aside, said in his low voice, Dumbledore does look a little bit soft in some ways. Yes. Dumbledore had such a weakness. Voldemort showed a smile of eight teeth, and then said, but this is very good news for us, as long as those people can haunt him for a little time, I will be able to give them a fatal blow. After hearing Snape's answer, Voldemort nodded and turned to him and asked, how are you preparing the various potions we need now? Don't worry about waste, we will get more after the victory. Basically ready, Master. Snape lowered his head and said, several stimulants, temporary replenishing potions, and all the things needed for fighting will be all cooked up tonight, if all goes well. Everyone can get these medicines tomorrow. Good job, Severus. Voldemort nodded with satisfaction. After the victory of the war, I will give you the due rewards of such loyal subordinates, and those who defy me and even rebel against me. It will certainly be punished. In the next half hour, Voldemort talked about his various plans, especially what kind of world he would build after the victory of the war. It wasn't until after the addiction that the two subordinates let go. After leaving the meeting room, Snape ignored Bella's entanglement like neuropathy and went upstairs back to his room. Different from those pragmatic young people. After entering the room, he first used a magic to confirm that there was no other investigative magic in the room, and then took out a long plain gold box from a floor that had been pried open in advance. After holding the golden box in his hand, Snape looked at the box in silence. After much thought, he did not open the box, but raised the floor again and put the box back in its original position. After standing up, Snape sat back at his desk then pulled out an old book whose pages had turned yellow and turned one of them. Then an old photo that also turned yellow and faded fell out of the book. Snape picked up the photo from the table. This was not a moving photo common in the wizarding world, but a black and white photo that was very common in the mull world decades ago. In the photo, a little boy with some greasy dark hair looked a little cramped, standing there in an old wizard robe that was obviously unfit, and beside him was a little lighter hair, also wearing a wizard robe with brilliant smiling little girl. The layout of the whole photo is a bit strange, because the two people in the photo are too close to the right and too close to the lens. But it can be seen from the photo that the height of the photographer is not high, probably a child www.mtlnovel.com Lily looking at the photo, Snape pursed his lips tightly, with a serious face gently touched the girl's face in the photo, and then sat in this position for a long time. It was not until someone knocked on the door that he quickly reached out and wiped the tears from the corner of his eyes to quickly clip the photo into the old book and then then tuck the book back into the pile of books on the table. What are you doing here? After opening the door, Snape found that it was John Parkinson, Pansy Parkinson's father, standing at the door. I don't remember what needs to be communicated between us. I know, Snape, our relationship has not been good since we were students. John Parkinson said very simply that as a staunch supporter of pure blood theory, he naturally looked down on him like Snape when he was a student. It's a mixed race with a very bad background, so he didn't intend to quibble at this time, but directly admitted the contradiction between the two sides in the past. But now I pray that you can help me. I didn't expect you, the noble head of a pure blood family, to come and beg me to be a dirty person in your eyes. Snape said in his low voice, but it's just like you asked me come in for a serving, don't stand in the hallway. Okay, tell me what you asked me for? Snape asked after entering the room and closing the door. For my daughter, Severus. John Parkinson said in a low voice, I don't think I can survive the next war. So Severus, I pray that you can end the war. Help my daughter later. Because you are the right and left hand most important to the owner, the chance of survival is definitely greater than mine. Of course, if you are willing to help my daughter, you can also watch our family's collection at will. Chapter 739, Reason. John Parkinson. After hearing old Parkinson's plea, Snape frowned, and then spoke in the slow tone he used to. We have a decisive advantage in this war, and we will certainly be able to win an easy victory. How can you doubt our great master here? and spread this kind of news full of defeat. After watching the old Parkinson's face change suddenly, Snape went on to say, of course, because you didn't seek me for yourself, and you didn't plan to escape, so this time I see you as a concern for my daughter I won't report it to a host, but I hope you will stop saying this kind of things in the future, and you won't have to ask anyone else to say this. Okay, Snape, 
I remember you, I hope you will be all right this time. After staring at Snape's face for more than ten seconds, the old Parkinson's expressionless expression from Snape's seeing nothing in her face, she left angrily after dropping a cruel word. The door was slammed shut in front of him, and Snape stood silently in the darkness of the room for a long, long time, until at last, a subtle sigh came from the darkness. This is not the first wizard to come to Snape to intercede. Given that Bella is no different from a lunatic, most Death Eaters have set their goals on Snell, who is also Lord Voldemort's right hand general body. They took out all kinds of resources, knowledge, and even the marriage of his daughter-in-law as a bait, hoping that he could have a lot of good words in front of Voldemort to let them escape the next war. It is different from Voldemort himself, who thinks that war is about to win. Almost all Death Eaters can feel that the scales of war are day after day leaning towards Hogsmeade the guys they looked down upon before and the probability of their own victory is decreasing day by day. This is not because Voldemort did not win in several battles. After all, even in the last war, Voldemort's personal power did not have much advantage. The main reason why Death Eaters were able to form a prairie trend in Britain and Europe in the war more than ten years ago was that the resources of these pure-blood wizards had an absolute advantage, and they could completely calm down the rebels. Dot. When the war started, the Death Eaters thought they had a greater advantage than the last war. After all, at the beginning they achieved what was not achieved in the last war, completely controlled the Ministry of Magic, and obtained the ruling power of the British magic world. This is why so many pureblood families directly invested in Voldemort after the Ministry of Magic fell, because they felt that even with the existence of Dumbledore, Voldemort wanted to annihilate those resistances in the North. It was easy to say that this war was a victory. If they do not hurry to express their loyalty, once the war is over, they will definitely be hurt if they are not completely liquidated by Voldemort. So one after another, the Pureblood family collectively and publicly fell to Voldemort in the shortest time and strove to come up with resources to please, hoping to harvest some loot after the war. With their help, Voldemort was able to launch a comprehensive blockade against the Northern Resistance organizations. These Pureblood felt that under such circumstances, even if Dumbledore and his loyal men tried their best to resist, Voldemort and the Death Eaters with absolute advantages would easily crush them. But the facts gave them a slap in the face, and the war that was supposed to end in a short time was dragged on and on, and in their eyes, the unstoppable crowds have become more and more powerful after the early chaos. What makes them even more incomprehensible is that, according to their calculations, once the pureblood wizards begin a complete blockade, all resources on the Hogsmeade side can last for at most a week or two. As long as you wait for a little, you can watch these resistances self-defeating without a fight, and then at most are some annoying security wars. But one week, two weeks, one month, two months time passed slowly as they waited. The long tug of war has now been more than half a year but in the long battle between them, they were shocked to find that the wizards in the north not only did not deplete resources as fast as they thought, but instead increased in equipment and supplies. The better, they even started to surpass them. As the biggest advantage of resources disappeared completely, the pureblood wizards panicked, and the fateful defeats afterward made them uneasy, and after this step, they were like April 1945 the German army in Berlin almost lost its morale, and only hoped to escape. Therefore, after entering this underground base, Voldemort had executed several guys who tried to run or publicly publicize the failure message, but still could not boost the morale of the others. The wizards of these pureblood families have recently been looking for any means, hoping to run out of this place or avoid the next battle. Therefore, there have been many practices like Snape trying to bribe and ask for news. But no matter how hard they try, how to get into the camp. In the end, he still couldn't escape the order that Voldemort asked everyone to attack together. So now this underground base is more and more like an underground grave and the atmosphere is quiet on the first day of the day. After being trapped in the underground base, these pureblood families are also thinking about a problem. Obviously this time they had a greater advantage than the last war, and they obviously seized the Ministry of Magic that had not been taken in the last war for more than ten years after the start of the war. But after putting two huge advantages together, why did it become the current situation? That's because they never thought that what they are now competing with is not one person or one country. It's several complete worlds. At the same moment, Ryan replied to Hermione on the puppet production line of the Floating Fortress. Ryan, they came to the Floating Fortress to check the manufacturing of the first batch of new battle puppets. After harvesting the manufacturing methods of the battle puppets in the world of Sky City, after a series of research and improvements, Ryan finally came up with a new model puppet that strikes a balance between power and Kenban. Today is exactly the first day these puppets are put into production. Fortunately, after the start of the puppet production line, everything went smoothly and with sufficient materials, it can produce at an average speed of 500 per day. Looking at the puppets on this fully automated production line, Hermione asked a question, that is, why Voldemort's side is obviously stronger than last time, but lost so fast. 
Ryan naturally gave Hermione a good lesson from the perspective of productivity. The final conclusion of you reading www.uukanzu.com is that Voldemort's failure this time is inevitable, because his greatest advantage turned into a disadvantage, and neither he nor his subordinates knew this. So the misunderstanding caused by the unequal information is beneficial to us. Hermione added after Ryan explained, although this war brought huge losses, it also made those enemies jump out all of a sudden. Dot after eradicating them cleanly, it is easy to realize our dreams. Yes, Ryan nodded. And I paid a lot of resources in this war. But in some ways this is not a loss. All the resources we donated and lent in the war before will play an important role after the war is over. Let us reform the magic world more smoothly. It's similar to the American Marshall Plan after World War II. Hermione raised her eyebrows and said excitedly, What we pay is only some resources and wealth, which is of no importance to us. But these pays can help us affect the entire British magic world. Speaking of which, Hermione shook her left hand violently her eyes flashing inexplicably. After all, it was the man who eventually became the Minister of Magic in the original text. Hermione's character is not as salty as Ryan. So at this time she seemed to be a little bit gaffy, but soon she also discovered this, her face suddenly turned red. Dot. It's okay, there's nothing embarrassing to pursue a dream. Ryan stepped forward and took her hand, then stared down at his eyes seriously. After the war is over, we will be able to start an era that belongs to us, just as President Dumbledore opened his era. Chapter 740 Fog of War. Because they hadn't seen Voldemort's appearance for a long time, Ryan's spirit was extremely tight. In such a very stressful situation, Dumbledore would even often leave Hogwarts and head to the London front to avoid the loss of Voldemort when no one could withstand Voldemort after the front line was attacked by Voldemort. Big. Also because of the threat of Voldemort, Ryan and Hermione were often away from the manor during this time. They chose to spend most of their time on the floating fortress to prepare for reinforcement of various locations at any time. In this state of mental tension, time came to May. At noon on the first day of May, Hermione walked into the observation room of the core magic tower on a silver tray with a plate of salmon sandwiches and a pot of black tea. After the stone door slid open, Hermione saw Ryan was standing on a three-story stone platform in the center of the observation room. On this platform, a crystal ball larger than the head was suspended in front of him quietly. There were purple ripples afterwards. The moment the ripples touched the wall, a pair of translucent pictures began to appear on the wall. Hermione recognized that these pictures were from downtown London and some were near Hogsmeade. There are still a lot of pictures where she doesn't know where. Have you eaten lunch? After discovering that Hermione was carrying the tray, Ryan gently waved her wand, and the crystal ball immediately fell slowly, onto a white stone table engraved with runes. It's really troublesome to get you here. It's okay, Hermione smiled and tapped the wall with her wand, and soon three slabs of high, two, and low heights protruded directly from the wall. A shabby tabletop and two face-to-face -face seats were formed, and then she put down the plate in her hand and picked up a sandwich, while handing it to Lion who had just walked out of the gate of the observation room. After taking a bite of the sandwich in her hand, Hermione raised her head and asked Ryan who was drinking black tea sitting face-to-face -face with her. There are indeed many differences from the previous few days. Ryan nodded after putting down the cup of black tea. For example, the activity of all Death Eaters in downtown London has dropped to a very low level and even Diagon Alley and Overturn Alley have been abandoned yesterday. I saw that the personnel of the Hogsmeade Department of Magic had reoccupied this morning. These places. What about Guling Pavilion? Hermione asked a key question. Did the Ministry of Magic take over Guling Pavilion this time? I hope they don't allow Guling Pavilion to provide wealth to the Death Eaters as before. They have completely blocked the Guling Pavilion now. Ryan said what he saw before, but maybe because there are not enough people, they did not enter the Guling Pavilion, but directly blocked the Guling Pavilion. But you don't have to worry fairies. They have a series of complex underground tunnel systems under the bank, and there are even places dedicated to growing mushrooms and certain plants, which can let them live for a long time. For us, after this war ended, the Guling Pavilion, which had been deprived of its coinage and monopoly power, was just an ordinary bank. This medieval-style bank would definitely not be a rival of modern banks. As for the risk of a goblin rebellion after depriving so many rights, this possibility will no longer exist after they bend their knees to Voldemort. For all intelligent creatures in this world, as long as they kneel once, they will remain in the rest of the time, will habitually kneel down. That is to say, all the Death Eaters in London are now hiding in the underground space of the Ministry of Magic to prepare for a final battle with us. Hermione raised her head and stared at Lane. Yes, the final battle will definitely be bloody, Lane nodded, because according to yesterday's investigation of the wizards in Diagon Alley, the Death Eaters use their shop to search a lot of materials before retreating into the Ministry of Magic, it seems that they plan to fight a real defense in the Ministry of Magic. War not a one-touch collapse like now. Seriously, a place like the Ministry of Magic is indeed suitable for a defensive battle. Hermione took a bite of the sandwich and said, there are only a few entrances and exits and a complicated underground environment. If I bring a group of people together, 
I certainly choose that place to defend, at least to avoid the embarrassment of everyone running after the war. You're right, Ryan frowned at this point. But I haven't locked the position of the mysterious man so far, even if I have almost filled the heart tree with Britain, and at the same time control many animals to monitor the land for 24 hours, which makes me very uneasy. How could there be no trace at all? Hermione frowned. I can understand if it is a mysterious person but he also brought a part of a large number of Death Eaters plus a lot of materials and wealth. It is impossible for so many people to disappear inexplicably. From the information received from Principal Dumbledore, we can be sure that neither the mysterious man nor his men have left the UK, but we have not yet found the exact location. Ryan shrugged. We all agree that there may be some secret bases in the UK that we do not know and are very concealed, and he and his running dogs are now preparing a large-scale attack plan at the base. This very likely, Hermione said slowly as she picked up her teacup, like our floating fortress. No one but us two knows it here, like a mysterious person. It's normal for a black wizard who has been ravaging a party for decades before to have a secret base that is also his own. So that's why I haven't found him so far. Ryan, who had finished the sandwich, said with an open hand. This kind of deliberately disguised place is difficult to find from such a large area of the British Isles, but I'm also prepared for the worst. Ryan said, stomping his foot gently, and the ground immediately became transparent. Through the ground. Hermione saw one after another puppets grouping themselves into ellipsoids and stood there in a row quietly. Make sure that we always have a mobile unit that can stand up at any time. I think 3,000 puppets may not be enough. Hermione made his point. This consumable is still a little better. With only 3,000, I worry that it may not be enough. Relax, I also thought of this. Ryan waved his hand, and a projection of a warehouse immediately appeared in the air. There were densely placed two-person armed steam robots which were also equipped with steam machine guns on their bodies. A lot of magical plants in sleep. These purely mechanical creations are not affected by magic, and after being strengthened by my alchemy, they also have a certain defense against magic attacks. Although these machines are indeed not as useful as those puppets, and they are easily destroyed by magic, but I have prepared a full 6,000 in the folding space below the floating fortress. Under the circumstances, we can get enough time and cover for us. That's good, as long as you have enough preparation. Hermione rubbed the position of her temple. Recently, Voldemort has been unable to hide the pressure on everyone, so after hearing that Ryan was fully prepared, she the expression seemed to relax a lot. Just after the two had finished eating, they just wanted to take a break, and suddenly a tone sounded in the hallway. Someone is looking for us at the door of the manor, who will it be? Hermione felt a little strange looking at the reminder rune floating in the air. Who would come here to come here at this time? Chapter 741, Newborn. Ryan said that there were people who came to the door and said that he was a bit puzzled. After all, Almost everyone is ready to commit to a war that may break out at any time. At this time, it is a bit abnormal to come to the door. But in any case, no matter how outdated this guest is, it is always an inappropriate thing to wait at the door. So Ryan and Hermione quickly returned to the manor to greet the guests. After the door of the manor opened, Lane discovered that Lupin was standing at the door. It's just different from the usual calmness after becoming a werewolf leader. At this time, Lupin's face turned red with excitement, wearing a black velvet embroidered silver travel robe, and his grey hair was extremely messy. After entering the door and confirming that it was Lan and Hermione who greeted him, he excitedly took Ryan's hand and said, It's a girl. We named him Andormida and used the name of Dora's mother. A healthy and beautiful child. This is, Tunks Tunks born? Hermione screamed, then covered her face with her hands folded and her eyes widened. Birth, birth, baby born, shouted Luping. His voice attracted Rose Crystal and the little puppets who came to visit today, and soon a cheer and relief rang out in front of the door. Sigh. Let's go in and say, don't stand at the door, Ryan said as he walked into the manor's living room with the big guy. Lupin fluttered like drinking too much wine, and the blush on his face became more obvious. Yes, it's a girl. Dora has been in pain since early this morning, and Kujang soon came to give her some analgesic and nerve-relaxing potions when she got the news but she didn't dare too much, fearing it would affect Fetus. Taylor and I were waiting at the door for five or six hours, and finally the baby was born smoothly, and the mother and daughter were safe, and now they are resting at home. Congratulations. Oh my god. A newborn, a new life is born. Is this the greatness of life? The little puppets chattered about their special lives. The birth of any new life is a welcome thing, and even a miracle. So now they look more excited than Lupin himself. Ryan was a little surprised when he heard the news, because he remembered that Lupin's first and only child in the original text was a boy. But think about how things have changed so much, so the gender change of the newborn should also be normal. Right, Hermione. After drinking a cup of black tea to calm down, Lupin turned to look at Hermione. Would you like to be a godmother? I? Hermione pointed her finger at herself in disbelief, because in her impressions, the godmother is generally a mature, older woman, not a twenty-year-old. Young people. Yes, it's you, Lu Ping said and nodded vigorously here. Of course in the discussion before departure, Dora and her parents fully agreed with this matter, 
and everyone thought no one was more suitable than good this is of course excellent god, it's incredible. Hermione looked very excited and happy. We should be able to celebrate a little and relax a little. When she finished, she instructed the robot to take a bottle of elf honey that would not be intoxicating from the cellar downstairs, and then filled the tall wine glasses in front of everyone. After the last wine glass was filled with wine, everyone stood up, and the puppets flew in midair and flush with everyone's shoulders. Then everyone raised their glasses together to celebrate. For Andromeda Dora Lupin, Lupin said, a great witch who is growing. After his words fell, everyone said together, for Andrea Dora Lupin. Then drink all the wine from the glass. Oh, who does she look like? After Zuzui sat down, Rose Crystal put her hands together on her chest and opened her eyes wide and asked Lupin, the knowledge I have seen from books before says human children after birth, he will look like his father or mother. I think she is like Dora, but Dora thinks of me. She doesn't have much hair. She looked black when she was born, but I swear it turned after an hour and it was probably golden when I went back the child's grandmother said that Tunk's hair began to change color the day he was born. Lupin drank the wine. Oh, have another drink. He added a smile, and soon the robot floated to him again. Fill the glass. Then the puppets asked various questions curiously, and Lupin answered them with a smile. After some refreshments were attracted by the robot to lure away these little guys, Lupin said to Ryan in surprise, they are actually a real life. This is incredible. In fact, there are many intelligent products in the magic world. The Hogwarts branch hat is one of them. In addition, there are ancient portraits of Hogwarts and some pureblood families and vice. The mirror and lay eyes burrow that would criticize people's dress. But at the core of these things is memory, not soul. This also leads to how intelligent these things depend on how much knowledge the people who made them instilled in them at that time. For example, the class hats carefully crafted by the big four are sometimes like humans, and those portraits drained by the principles it can also provide experience for latecomers. But like that mirror, at most it indicates whether it is suitable for everyone to wear. But they have one thing in common, that is, they have no soul. In this way, the biggest characteristic of them is that the knowledge they have acquired is limited at the moment they are created, and all feedback is based on these knowledge. They will never update their knowledge and have a true self. And this is the reason why Lupin was shocked. He had also seen the Rose Crystal fighting side by side with Ryan before, but always thought she was just the same kind of intelligent magic puppet as the branch hat, so she did not pay much attention. But after chatting out of curiosity for a while, he was shocked to find that these puppets actually had self-awareness, that is to say they belong to the soul www.mtlnovel.com This really shocked Professor Lupin. Of course, they are all the same life as you and me, but they are not as big as us. The one who usually wears purple clothes with me is my sister, and the others are my teacher's daughters. Ryan explained Lupin's surprised expression. It's really magical. After lamenting the magic of these little puppets for a while, Lupin said goodbye to Ryan. I think I should go back now. It's still a long time to come out this time. I, I am worried that my family will be in a hurry now. As Lupin put on the robe he just took off, he said to Ryan, Goodbye, goodbye I'll try to bring some photos in a few days they know I'll see you and they will be very happy. He fastened his robe and began to say goodbye to Ryan, especially shaking hands with the little puppets in the air very seriously. Then in the sight of Ryan and Hermione walked out of the courtyard and disappeared. The birth of a new life at this time should be good news. Watching Lupin disappear from the courtyard door, Hermione whispered, Why do I suddenly feel that the burden is now heavier? It may be because you became a kind of elder psychology after becoming a child's godmother. Lane said slowly, Humans always do this, and they will consider it for them after they have descendants. And now we are in war in the meantime, you will naturally feel that the children should hurry to end this war and create a better space for them. Yes, you are right. Hermione nodded for a moment. I just don't know when this decisive battle will really break out. Chapter 742, Prelude On May 3rd, Dumbledore finally decided to prepare a general attack on the Ministry of Magic in London. In consideration of the worst intentions, Ryan secretly deployed the floating fortress in front of the Black Lake, and unloaded a large amount of goods in the Black Lake under the cover of night and the floating fortress. Then on the evening of May 2nd, he rushed to Hogsmeade with Hermione. Early the next morning, they got up early and started to prepare. After breakfast, they rushed to the conference room under the Ministry of Magic as the temporary command center of Hogsmeade. At this time, Lupin and Sirius were already waiting for them here. Dot. It's really early for you to come. Let's take a quick look together and hurried over. We haven't done anything else. I didn't expect to come later than you, Ryan said after hanging the coat on the hanger next to it. Today he and Hermione are both fully armed, each wearing a set of light armor that has been treated with very complex enchantments and alchemy. We didn't go home last night, Sirius said with a smile. We stayed here all night, and then used the changed mattress to sleep in this conference room. I was worried about something unexpected. The event occurred. It's really hard, Ryan asked after a soft sigh. Oh, Sirius, didn't you say you were going to take part in the final blow to the Ministry of Magic in London? Why didn't you pass now? I was thinking about the past. Sirius shrugged helplessly. 
but Professor Dumbledore asked me to stay because he took away almost all the members of the Ministry of Magic and the Order of the Phoenix in this general attack today. In order to prevent us from being attacked by surprise, I was appointed to stay and strengthen the town of Hogsmeade. Overall defense, Mr. Principal is still a little uneasy, Ryan thought, but it also made sense. After all, his own guerrillas and the new wolves led by Lupin did not highlight some of them because they had always attached importance to group combat capabilities. Member. In this way, in the eyes of ordinary people, they will feel the Tryon lags top fighting ability except a few people. Therefore, when this important battle erupted, Professor Dumbledore still withdrew his valuable combat power and sent it to Hogsmeade to ensure that his rear would not be threatened by the enemy. It doesn't matter if you stay, Hogsmeade really lacks a person who can lead you to fight back. The training time of Professor Lupin and I's subordinates is still too short, and I have not yet been able to cultivate a real elite like you. Lane said that he took a small box out of his space bag, and after opening it was a thin black jumpsuit. In order to make up for the lack of combat power, I specially prepared some special props. Unfortunately, this kind of thing has a shelf life of only about half a month, and it is also difficult to produce, so I can only concentrate on using it at this time. Ryan launched the jumpsuit speaking. Last night I had asked the Weasley twin brothers to deliver the protective clothing for London. What's the use of looking at something like a mull diving suit? Sirius, who had studied the mull culture for a while when he was young, took over the one-piece suit and asked curiously. Does it provide magical protection like your protective bracelet? Yes, but its effect is more useful than you think. Lane smiled, and then said the biggest feature of this tight protective suit. This dress can resist a life spell. This is what Ryan did after they returned from Silver Moon City. Although this protective suit is very thin, it actually has a mezzanine. Inside the mezzanine is a slime monster treated by alchemy. When they were in Silver Moon City, they found that the slime monster's health value is similar to that of human beings, and it can be shaped like a liquid. So he was inspired to study this special armor. In the experiment, Ryan discovered that the slime monster that was tucked into the protective clothing layer after treatment could prevent the user from attacking a life spell as he expected. It is just because the slime monster can only protect when it is alive. So even if the alchemist potion is used to put the slime monster to sleep to maintain its life as much as possible, the life of the protective suit is only half a month. Coupled with the rare raw materials, Ryan hasn't had enough protective clothing to fight a war until now. This is a miracle, Sirius said in surprise looking at this suit. He didn't question why Ryan didn't come up with this thing before. In his eyes, this kind of thing can be mass-produced on a small scale. If this is a miracle, I still have 150 miracles here. Ryan finished pouring out a small pile of protective clothing from the space pocket. Now quickly send them to the hands of every combatant, because this morning the situation makes me feel a little uneasy. You are right, Lupin nodded. In five minutes, Professor Dumbledore will leave Hogwarts for London, and the next day will be when Hogsmeade and Hogwarts have the lowest level of defense. Wrong. After talking, Lupin called in a wolf from outside to let him distribute these protective suits, and he and Sirius ran to the next door to put on this protective suit. After wearing it, the hole is not bad, and it is also easy to fight. Lupin and Sirius changed their clothes and walked out of the room next door. As soon as they entered the door, Sirius pulled out his wand and made a few actions and then evaluated it. It just feels a bit boring. Sirius's voice just fell, and an oil lamp placed in the room suddenly lit up. Professor Dumbledore has left Hogwarts. Professor Lupin said after the light came on, if all goes well, the general attack on the Ministry of Magic in London will begin in five minutes. Then let's enter the battle position now, Lane said. To raise Hogsmeade to the highest alert state, I think the mysterious man and his elite might appear near Hogsmeade at any time. You're right, we really should act now. Everyone present nodded, then put on the hat of the protective suit and pulled on the mask, and finally put on the hood and walked out of the room. Several guerrilla members and werewolves sitting on a bench at the door of the meeting room found Ryan after they came out and stood up www.mtlnovel.com and followed them to the door. On the way, all the wizards who stayed at the Ministry of Magic saw this pedestrian and pulled out their wands, pointed the chest with the tip of the stick, and bowed to Ryan. Commander, a lot of unknown magic reactions suddenly appeared around him. Just when Ryan had just returned to the ground, a gorilla under the command of Ryan contacted Ryan through the alchemy props he had sent before. What's the specific situation? Lane asked while holding a magic metal card. How many enemies are there? From which direction are they coming? But the next answer stopped Ryan's footsteps. Because the answer from the communicator was, I don't know how many enemies there are, but now the display crystal you marked to us is full of enemies and numbers. At least more than 3,500. Everywhere. 3,500. Everyone's face looked ugly all at once especially Ryan, because he knew that he had prepared a lot of heart trees and investigation methods from multiple worlds around Hogsmeade and Hogwarts for safety. The detectors previously sent to the gorillas were connected to the detection points. Voldemort may have his own way of avoiding the world's investigative magic, but in the face of a mixture of multiple worlds of reconnaissance, even the strongest Dark Lord in decades cannot avoid all, which is how Ryan can find out. 
the wrong reason. How much time can the other party get here? He asked before raising the metal card. At most ten minutes, we can see them appearing outside the woods, the gorillas said quickly. Chapter 743, Lay Down. More than 3,500 people, Voldemort's so many men. After his subordinates report to Ryan, Sirius exclaimed in a low voice, especially the dark creatures of vampires, werewolves and giants in this war have not joined his ranks. Leave this alone, Lupin said, interrupting Sirius's complaint and then turn to look at Tryon. Are you sure about the result of this investigation? Will there be any big errors? Of course, I am not saying that this is a suspicion of your ability, but this number is really a bit too. I can confirm this number, and this number will only be more or less. Ryan interrupted Lupin's expression with a serious expression, and then told him. However, you don't have to be overly nervous. The number of 3,500 detected can only show how many individuals have come. It does not mean that all of the numbers are wizards. The situation is terrible. Fortunately, we still have a ten-minute warning time, Lu Ping said, turning around and following his own werewolf. Withdraw all the people outside the town wall. The other party is too large and give up the plan to block the enemy outside the town. Just when Lupin gave the order, Hermione also issued a retreat order to the peripheral gorillas through that metal card and began to prepare for the battle. When Ryan and they boarded the walls of Hogsmeade together, they saw three or five groups of wizards withdrawing from the surrounding ambush sites on broomsticks and joined the town's preparations after verifying their identities. By the way, what about the non-combatants in the town? Ryan suddenly thought of the ordinary people living in Hogsmeade and the people in the hospital who were temporarily out of combat. I don't think our strength can keep those guys out of town. Don't worry, we transferred them yesterday, Lupin said to Ryan. We transferred them to the open space where the Quidditch World Cup was held, because we were worried that Voldemort was taking advantage of Principal Dumbledore. Sneak attack when not in, but really did not expect that there will be so many enemies. Penlo, how did you come? Just as Lupin spoke to Ryan. A large group of ordinary people in the town came out of the house here and walked to the street, and then divided into more under the leadership of several people. A team walked over to the wall in all directions. It was the seven or eight people led by Penlo who came to the wall at the town gate where they were facing the enemy's attack. From these people, Ryan recognized the entertainment of three brooms, the waiter of the former Fenia sorcerer's robe, and other people. He was a little surprised why these non-combatants would take the initiative to appear here. Because we want to protect our home, Penlo said with a smile. Some people are reluctant to give up their homes for generations, and some feel that they have moved here from London, and they really do not want to retreat. So we started training how to guard our current hometown of Hogsmeade more than a month ago. And today is when our training comes in handy. Well, everybody's strength is useful at this time. I hope you can follow our command to play the greatest role. Lane nodded and said, Yes, you learned this training in the end something? The simple combat magic you taught in the newspaper before. Penlo replied, Everyone here will use the magic correctly, and at the same time be able to use the designated magic to the marked place according to the command. Very good. Hermione said with a smile and hugged Penlo. You just stand behind us in groups. After hearing the order, you can shoot in the specified direction with the specified magic. After simply arranging the defense of the town, Abnormal movements came from outside Hogsmeade, a large group of birds flew out of the woods like a cloud. At the same time, many branches in the distance began to shake, and it looked like a large group of things were rushing towards Hogsmeade from under the woods. Stabilize, stabilize, seeing the movement outside the town, the townspeople who had just gone to the city had a little commotion with some professional combatants, but soon he was pacified by others on the wall. At the same time, a transparent protective cover slowly rose and enveloped the town of Hogsmeade. Look! Suddenly someone on the wall pointed in the direction of Hogwarts on the hill. Just as Hogsmeade raised the protective cover, Hogwarts Castle also upgraded its magical cover. Hogwarts is ready to fight, and so is Azkaban. Sirius, who was just preparing to contact other people, hurriedly ran up the city wall at this time, then walked to Lane and said, But London it is troublesome, and five minutes before Professor Dumbledore entered the Ministry of Magic, all contact was broken. The personnel left outside guessed that the dead men stationed in the Ministry of Magic had started the Ministry's defense, even if it was Dumbledore, it won't be possible for a while. How is it possible? Ryan asked somewhat puzzled. I remember the Ministry of Defense's defense can't stop the Phoenix. Principal Dumbledore can use his Phoenix to fly out. Not for the time being. Sirius grinned bitterly. Now there is a group of Lord Voldemort's diehards in the London Ministry of Magic. They are ready to destroy the London Ministry of Magic at any time. Only Dumbledore can guarantee that these people will kill or subdue them before they can do magic. Why are they waiting for Dumbledore to subdue them? This is intentionally delaying time. Hermione reacted at once. The group of Death Eaters did not intend to hold the Ministry of Magic before, but used the lives of all the people in the Ministry, including the lives of the Ministry staff and the attacking wizards, as a bargaining chip to hold Dumbledore. Damn, it seems that we can only rely on us here. Ryan summoned a pair of pink wings, and then flew to the wall and shouted, All defenders, this is a battle for all of us to defend our homes, 
and it is also a battle to defend the future. So let us let go of a battle today. www.mtlnovel.com I am very honored to be fighting alongside you. After inspiring the morale of Hogsmeade's guards to land on the city wall, a bright blue fire suddenly ignited in the distant woods. With the click of the broken tree, an obsidian, a giant wolf with a blue flame in its joints and facial features came out of the forest. The giant wolf stopped as soon as it left the cover of the woods. It glanced at the guards in Hogsmeade and the city walls with a human touch, then raised his hair and made a sharp howling like nails and glass. This howling is a signal. As the sound fell, one huge figure after another appeared on the edge of the forest. There are all kinds of obsidian monsters inside, and there are also obsidian giants in metal armor holding big sticks. And the Death Eaters, wearing peaked hats and silver masks and black robes, stood among these obsidian puppets. It's just that they look like dolls compared to these giant puppets. Fortunately, we have evacuated all the non-combatants. Looking at the giant obsidian puppets still coming out of the forest, Professor Lu Ping said happily. Otherwise a lot of innocent people will be hurt this time. The puppet monsters and Death Eaters came out of the forest quietly, and then stood there in a square formation. There was still a little talking voice on the city wall, but as the phalanx became more and more, the voice gradually became smaller, and finally the whole town became dead. The Death Eaters plus puppets are at least 5,000, and there are a lot of strong fighting guys in these puppets. Lane communicated with Hermione through the Phoenix brand. This is really troublesome. Chapter 744, Raid. What the are they waiting for? Penlo asked strangely, watching the group of wizards and puppets standing the motionless. Her words just fell, and the people underneath suddenly moved. However, this group of people did not charge Hogsmeade, but some people neatly separated to the two sides to reveal a road leading to the middle of the woods. I guess this is Voldemort coming, Lane whispered into Hermione's ear. Look at this show, Babble. Voldemort did not keep everyone waiting, or he didn't dare to waste time at this time. Immediately after the puppets and the Death Eaters gave way, a Voldemort in black robe with pale white skin and a flat snake-like face came out. After he appeared, everyone in Hogsmeade seemed to be pressed the mute button. Everyone even suppresses coughing and breathing as much as possible. It looks like you intend to resist. After scanning the people standing on the city wall with snake-like eyes, a high, cold, and clear sound, like a voice soaked in ice water for thousands of years, passed from Voldemort's position come out. But Ryan didn't find him opening his mouth, it should be that Voldemort used some magic for the purpose of intimidation. I have to say that this magic did have its due effect, because when Voldemort's voice sounded, many people in Hogsmeade began to tremble, and there was also a look of fear on his face. Even Ryan heard someone's teeth start to tremble, your efforts are useless. You are not my opponent. I don't want to kill you. I have great respect for Hogsmeade the only town in the UK that belongs to the wizard, and I don't want to let the wizard bleed. Voldemort's the voice echoed over the town of Hogsmeade, and everyone listened to his speech quietly. Today I went to Hogwarts to find Harry Potter, Voldemort's voice said. None of you will be injured, as long as you don't stop my army. And if you are willing to cooperate with me, you will get rewards. After talking, Voldemort took his entire army and started walking towards Hogwarts Castle. Standing on the wall of Hogsmeade, the man clenched his wand tightly and watched the mighty army silently. Is Voldemort bringing so many people just to kill Harry? Hermione's eyes widened and the letter was branded with the phoenix. Why did he do this? It is clear that most of our war potential is concentrated in Hogsmeade. Even if they just burn the bank, it is a major blow to us. Hermione looked at the reserve team. We stood together wearing a suit of armor, wearing Pandaren brothers with spellcasting rings and claw sleeves. Don't forget which prediction about Harry, Ryan explained. Now Voldemort has only one blow, so he naturally takes the killing of Harry as his primary goal. Because the prophecy once said that Harry is the salvation star, as long as he kills him, Voldemort will win a real victory. Believe in prophecy? Hermione snorted disdainfully. She had always thought that prophecy was just a trick to deceive people, especially Trelawney made it. Whether you think this prediction is true or false, the core is Voldemort's belief. Ryan showed a strange expression because he also felt that putting his own destiny on a fable was really too negative. Just as Ryan and Hermione were talking through the Phoenix brand, Ryan found that Sirius seemed to be unable to bear the impulse of his heart through the afterglow of his eyes, and slowly raised the arm holding the wand. Wait a moment, the time is not yet right. Ryan squeezed the right hand of Sirius who wanted to raise his wand. The magic I prepared is not yet ready for release, and if you look at everyone around you, it is not a good time to fight. Sirius put down the wand he was about to lift and looked around. Sure enough, Many people standing on the city wall, especially those volunteers now looked low in morale, and some even dared not look up at Voldemort below. Can you use your virgin rose's power to destroy those puppets? Hermione leaned over and asked in a low voice. I remember that the magic you released with the use of Our Lady of Roses would have enough damage to these magical creations. If you kill these thousands of puppets, it will be much easier to fight. It's not that simple. Ryan also whispered to Hermione, I actually tried it when the first obsidian puppet wolf appeared. But Voldemort should have known that I could there are special means to destroy those magical props, 
So now these puppets have special magical defenses on them. Even if I use the Virgin Rose, I can only dismantle them one by one. It is impossible to destroy all the puppets at once like the previous flying broom. How Voldemort did it, I don't think he is stronger than you in alchemy. Hermione frowned slightly, but soon she woke up. Damn it. It's a collection of pure blood wizard families. After staying with Ryan for such a long period of time, Hermione naturally learned a lot about alchemy. Therefore, she knows that the gap in technology is not insurmountable. As long as you are willing to invest enough good raw materials, even if your technology is generally able to create extraordinary powerful magic props, like some ancient magic props that have been passed down to today. In fact, because of their age, the technology contained in these props is very simple compared to the modern magic props production technology that has been developed for hundreds of years, but because these props are used the materials are really good, so the whole is still very powerful magic props. Ryan has also collected a lot of antique props left in the past. These conclusions are based on his experience when studying these magic props. Of course, many of the studied magic props were also directly destroyed by Ryan as precious materials for recycling, too. So what should we do now? Hermione whispered www.mtlnovel.com can't always watch these guys attack Hogwarts castle. There are our classmates and professors. Don't forget the legions we prepared in the Black Lake. They will give this Voldemort's army a painful blow. Ryan stared at Voldemort and said to Hermione, at this time Voldemort also stopped with a sense of heart. Looking up at Ryan, while staring at each other, the two clenched their wands at the same time. But because both of them had scruples, they just glared at each other and did not take the initiative. After staring at each other for a while, Voldemort's army also bypassed the town of Hogsmeade and marched towards Hogwarts Castle. And he himself, after watching more than two-thirds of the people leave the town, slammed his black robe and walked to the front of the team. Behind him, Nagini was protected by a strong magic in the middle. Also drifted past. We can't always look at it that way. Sirius said impatiently. He found that the nervousness was only part of the staff of the Ministry of Magic and the civilians who volunteered to guard the city walls, and the wizards who participated in the battle directly under Ryan and Lupin. It was just shocked at the beginning, and almost all the fighting spirit was restored in a few seconds. What should be done now? You're right. To Sirius's expectation, Ryan who had been unresponsive just now, nodded in agreement, then raised his wand and drew a somewhat complicated rune in the air. It is indeed time to start. As soon as the words fell, a piece of black pressure suddenly jumped out of the black lake and rushed straight to the Voldemort Legion, which was now a word of a long snake, and directly divided the Voldemort Legion that had been relaxed. Chapter 745, Confrontation What is that? Sirius asked in amazement. He saw brown puppets that were two people tall suddenly rushed out of the lake and then used the sharp claws and the beams emitted from the head to kill the Lord Voldemort's army. It can only be said that Voldemort and I thought about going together, and we were all using magic puppets to make up for the shortage of manpower, Ryan explained to Sirius, and then turned around to give orders. The human subteams attacked the Death Eaters and puppets in the attack range, but they were not allowed to leave the city without orders. In an instant, the space outside Hogsmeade's wall was immediately filled with various spells, and the battle entered a fierce heat at the beginning. The Death Eaters were obviously caught off guard especially when the Ryaness puppets cut off from the railway line and the Hogsmeade town wall. The Death Eaters and puppets were immediately caught in two sides. Dot. But unexpectedly, Voldemort and most of the troops in front ignored the team who was suddenly surrounded by the team, but accelerated the speed and ran towards Hogwarts Castle. What is Voldemort doing? After trapping an obsidian giant with a cloud of mist and letting the puppet of Ryan shoot a beam of energy directly from the head and destroying it, Hermione looked at the group in disbelief. Legion of Death Eaters heading towards Hogwarts. She didn't understand why Voldemort gave up nearly a third of his troops so easily. He might have wanted to drag our footsteps through this group of people, and then attack Hogwarts with all his strength. Lane said, releasing a green cracking technique and hitting the core of the head of an obsidian giant puppet. The head of the puppet turned into a pile of ashes, and the blue flame that had surrounded the puppet disappeared. Losing the support of magic power, the headless obsidian puppet giant was stiff and stiff there, and then crashed forward. An unlucky Death Eater didn't notice this because he was talking to the people on the walls of Hogsmeade Township. The result was that he was just smashed under the giant puppet by the fallen giant. The puppet spread out beneath him, as if blooming a rose on the ground. At this time, Ryan looked at the comrades on the left and right walls, and found that everyone's condition was better than they expected. Under the command of the gorillas and the werewolves, the temporary wizards poured out their spells on the rushing Death Eaters and puppets. The group of Death Eaters and the Obsidian puppets could not get close. After losing a third of their power, the attacked Death Eaters suddenly formed a group to give up the Obsidian puppets that were entangled with Ryan's puppets, and then directed the remaining Obsidian puppets around, act as a cover to release magic around. It seems that this group of Death Eaters really intends to drag the battle down, so what should we do now? Lupin ran over to ask Ryan at this time. The wizards of Hogsmeade Town are able to hold the city walls, but it may be difficult to pull out and attack head-on. Let me think about it, 
Ryan said with his left hand supporting his chin. In fact, at this time, the easiest way for him to quickly solve this group of tortured Death Eaters is to recruit now floating in the Black Lake in secret. The floating fortress above, then directly released a strategic spell at the group of Death Eaters. But Voldemort must be vigilant in this way, and then it will be difficult to kill him. And guys like Voldemort will definitely have a headache if they give up everything to fight Gorilla. Just as Ryan thought, there was a huge explosion in the direction of Hogwarts. Ryan looked up and found that the protective cover over the castle began to flash and shook, which also meant that there was not much time for him to think now. I Ryan was about to mobilize the floating fortress to gift this group of guys a fatal blow. A tall figure walked over and said, Hogsmeade is already safe. Now it really only needs not much. People and a part of the alchemy puppet can maintain the current situation. You can draw enough people to go to Hogwarts for reinforcements. The coming man had strands of gray hair and beards like wire, and bright, sharp blue eyes hidden behind dirty lenses, and Lupin quickly recognized him. Aberforth, are there no enemies on the East Gate? Then he turned his head and introduced to Ryan, this one you may not know. He is Aberforth, Aberforth Dumbledore, the owner of the Pig's Head Bar, an early member of the Order of the Phoenix, and the younger brother of Dumbledore. Just been responsible for the defense of the East Gate. Good luck. Ryan nodded to Aberforth. I've seen your photos in Sirius's album before, but I have never seen a real person. The Pig's Head Bar is indeed not suitable for young people like you, and I haven't contacted my brother for a long time. Then he glanced at the group of Death Eaters besieged by puppets and magic groups on the head of the city. Then he said, Every time my elder brother makes a grand plan, he always ignores some people and hurts them. It seems that fortunately you have taken care of my brother this time. It doesn't count, this is the task he arranged for me before the war. Ryan replied and then asked. The method you just said is indeed a good idea, but the difficulty now is that I can't lead everyone down the road into Hogwarts. Because if you do that, the besieged Death Eaters will find you and come out desperately, and it is also necessary to break through the siege of the Death Eaters who are currently besieging Hogwarts. Ryan did not say that he has a special phantom shift because the next time is the final battle time, and he hopes to leave this surprise to Voldemort. After all, the more preparation you make at this time, the greater the chance of victory. Then why don't you try the secret road? Aberforth suggested, if the secret road is used, the following Death Eaters will not know that we are mobilizing manpower. But didn't Albus block all the secret passages in the castle before? Looping asked in a puzzled way. www.mtlnovel.com It was also a big project to dig up those blocked secret passages again. Now, it is simply too late. He didn't seal all the tunnels, at least one at the pig's head bar is now available. Aberforth interrupted Lupin's chatter, if you are ready, then we will start now. There's nothing to prepare, let's go now. Lane said and walked down the city wall with Lupin. After dozens of seconds, more than twenty werewolves and gorilla members gathered from all over to gather in a quiet line on the road under the city wall. Are you ready? Aberforth asked, looking at the stern wizards who stood there seriously, and then took everyone to the pig head bar. When he walked, he murmured to Ryan who was standing next to him, My brother is always like this. He only pays attention to his grand goals but does not pay attention to those who carry out the goals, even letting your seventeen-year-old children act as resist the main force of that man. But this battle can't escape for me, Lane whispered. Now only I can stand Voldemort in this place. If I don't go, this war will be too bad for us. No wonder my brother will find you as the person in charge here, because your idea of carrying the burden for everyone is exactly the same as him. Aberforth stopped with a laugh. At this time they had reached the entrance of a small bar at the intersection. The tattered wood signboard was hung on the rusty bracket on the door. The head of the wild boar was painted on it, and the blood stains penetrated the white cloth that wrapped it. Please come in and welcome to the pig's head bar. Aberforth knocked on the door with his wand, then stood at the door and made a gesture. Chapter 746 Enter Hogwarts. The pig's head bar is completely different from the three brooms that Ryan has visited. It only has a small, dark, and very dirty room that exudes a strong smell of sheepskin. Thick dirt accumulates on the bay windows, the light barely penetrates, and some candle heads are lit on the rough wooden table. At first, Ryan thought the ground was mud, but after walking a few steps, it was discovered that the stone paved ground had accumulated dirt for centuries. Obviously Hermione also discovered this, so she walked on the heels like a ballet dancer. Soon. Everyone who was going to reinforce Hogwarts entered the bar. More than twenty people crowded the entire room to make the whole house look smaller and darker. Okay, the man standing at the end helped close the door, and the rest followed me. Aberforth turned his head and said to the people in the back, and then led everyone around the counter and went through one. The door finally climbed up the living room on the second floor along a dangling wooden staircase. The living room is much cleaner than the lobby on the first floor. There is a worn carpet on the ground and a small fireplace. A large oil painting hangs above the fireplace. It is a blonde girl looking at it tenderly but tenderly. Inside the house, Mr. Dumbledore, Hermione whispered after seeing the portrait. Is this your sister, Ariana? Yes, Aberforth said stiffly. I think you may have heard about our family from some people, but now is not the time to discuss this, you need to hurry. 
He cleared his throat and stood around the small table, standing in front of Ariana's portrait. You know what to do. The girl smiled slightly and turned away. She did not disappear by the frame like the person in the usual portrait, but seemed to walk along a long tunnel painted behind her. They watched her delicate figure go further and further, and finally engulfed in darkness. What an exquisite mechanism design, Ryan whispered in exclamation and the result was a dissatisfied look in Aberforth. After glancing at Ryan who closed his mouth after knowing it was rude, the portrait on the wall opened like a small door, revealing the entrance of a real tunnel. Good luck to you. Aberforth nodded vigorously, and then let out a seat in front of the fireplace to make a stool for them to step on their feet. As the leader of the team, Ryan stepped on the stool and climbed to the mantelpiece through the hole behind Ariana's portrait. After watching Ryan go in, the others also entered and finally only Aberforth stood quietly in the living room. The situation in the tunnel is much better than expected. The entrance of the tunnel is covered with smooth stone steps, and brass lamps are hanging on the walls to give a warm yellow light to the surroundings. After a further walk, the stone slab disappeared and only mud was left on the ground. But it wasn't the kind of potholes in other tunnels with rocks and tree roots, but very flat and hard dirt roads. The other passage is very steep, so everyone has a slight gasp after walking out of the road. Although everyone's voice is not loud. The gasp of more than twenty people still sounded in the dark tunnel. After finally turning a corner, everyone came to the end of the passage. Like the entrance, there is a short stone staircase leading to a door, exactly like the door behind Ariana's portrait. After gently pushing the door open, an empty room appeared in front of them, which looked as small as a small classroom. There was nothing in the room except for five or six torches on the wall and a door on the opposite wall. Why have I never been here? Where is this? I don't remember this house in Hogwarts. Yeah. I can't have heard of such a characteristic room. After everyone came in, several gorillas murmured. After all, they had graduated from here before, so it was natural to be curious to meet a room that basically no one had seen. This is the House of Requests, a secret room belonging to Hogwarts Castle. Ryan, who has used the House of Requests many times, quickly judged where it was from the road and the magical reaction in the room. His door opened on the eighth floor opposite the giant baton who played silly Barnabas tapestry, but it was always hidden. It turns out that way. Several gorillas nodded and then one of them walked to the door to open it, but suddenly a transparent air wall appeared in front of him blocking his right hand reaching towards the door handle. Since someone tried to attack Hovots through the end of last semester, I have been covered with traps all around the house of request. When you go out like this, you will trigger all the traps. Ryan squeezed over next to the gorilla and explained then he pulled out his wand and knocked on the door handle. Everyone in the room felt for a moment that there was a strong static electricity sweeping past them, and the hair on them all stood up. At the same time they saw a pink light enveloping the whole room. After these rays of light hit a large number of complex or simple magic symbols, they first emerged from the wall and then dimmed again. Now we can go out. After the last sign dimmed and disappeared into the wall, the door blew outward. So everyone saw that everyone saw the giant stick on the wall opposite the door playing the silly Barnabas tapestry. After the door opened, Ryan turned and spoke to everyone in the room. It's better for everyone to move faster, because those traps will be reactivated after two minutes. Of course, if we all go out and close the door, the traps will also be activated. After listening to Ryan's words, everyone quickly lined up and the two teams came out through the door. When the last person came out of the room, they closed the door. When the two doors were joined together, a large number of various runes emerged from the door. Next we should inform the castle, Lupin said standing beside Ryan, but he heard the sound of a wooden stick hitting the floor before the words of the stairs www.mtlnovel.com armor fainted. A red light came from the direction of the stairs and was blocked by a barrier. After blocking a coma spell, Ryan shouted in the direction of the stairs, we are reinforcements from Hogsmeade coming through the secret passage not a Death Eater. Prove your identity. Moody's voice came down the stairs. Only one person can come to the stairs to communicate with me, otherwise I will attack directly. Let's go, you are waiting here, Ryan said after a command. He spread his wings and slowly floated up a foot. Then it flew all the way to the stairs. When he looked down, he really saw Moody holding his wand at him under the cover of the handrail. It turns out to be you, Lane. Moody lowered his wand after seeing the floating lion. Let those reinforcements come down, I believe no one can threaten you to let someone in. After everyone came, they followed Moody all the way down the stairs to prepare to join other people. On the way, Ryan and Lupin started to ask about Hogwarts. Hogwarts is not doing well now, Moody said seriously. Voldemort and the Death Eater attacked the Outer Shield like crazy, even if we tried our best to resist the shield for as long as ten more minutes. This is still your magic sculptures who have been stabbing the Death Eaters behind. The reason why he couldn't attack with all his strength. At this time they just passed a corner of the stairs and Ryan saw the statues and armor in the castle now standing in a line in the courtyard. At the same time, there were some winds whistling on the playground. Chapter 747, Najini Death What about the students in the school? I remember the school was still in class yesterday. Hermione asked Moody nervously after stepping down the two stairs. Where are they now? Have they left here? All the students are in the castle 
because we really didn't expect Voldemort to launch a decisive battle today. A trace of regret flashed on Moody's face. Last night, the result of our discussion with Albus was that Voldemort will be magic in the final battle with us. At least some Death Eaters would come to Hogwarts to harass the people who dragged the castle. So we think it might be safer for students to stay in Hogwarts Castle, but in order to ensure that there will be no major problems, we still mobilized most of the guards in Azkaban to protect the castle. That is why the reason we can stick to the present is that if we rely on the professors alone, the protective layer will be broken five or six minutes ago. At this time, they had quickly entered the hall of the auditorium where Vice President Professor McGonagall was standing and instructed several senior students to set up defense lines in the castle. After hearing the stairs, she turned around and saw everyone who was going downstairs. Ryan, Lupin, how did you come in? Professor McGonagall first smiled excitedly, and then quickly became unbelievable. I remember all secret passages were blocked. There is one thing left that basically nobody knows, and its entrance is in the pig's head bar. Lane said, this is what President Dumbledore's brother Aberforth only told us today. There is also a usable passage which is great. McGonagall breathed a sigh of relief before speaking to the two senior students standing there. Simo, you and Neville are going to call Professor Flivine now, and then go to the basement kitchen with him to take the junior students hiding there to the responsive room on the eighth floor, where there is a passageway to the pig head bar, I will send a few sculptures to help you. Right, watching Seymour and the man prepare to leave after receiving the order, Ryan stopped them and passed a thumb-sized pink gem. When I opened the door, I thought we wanted a way to the pig's head bar. Remember to bring this gem as long as it is in those traps in the room. The trap will not be activated. Two minutes after the gem leaves or the gem holder closes the trap will be reactivated. Got it. Simone nodded and took the gem to run towards the kitchen, and Neville ran out of the door to inform Professor Flitwick, who is now in the courtyard. Okay, you go to the courtyard with me. After watching the two men run to their respective goals, Professor McGonagall said to Ryan and their reinforcements, we'd better delay the time for more time, to allow enough evacuation time for those younger students. Understood. Professor McGonagall, Ryan said unanimously, and then each raised their wands to the sky shield to inject their own strength. With their help, the already shattered protective cover was stabilized again. The next ten minutes was a pure tug of war. The outer Death Eaters commanded the Obsidian Puppets to knock on the shield, and at the same time they constantly released magic to the shield to consume the magic in this shield. And Ryan from time to time to add magic power to the protective cover to make up for the consumed parts. The battle situation thus stalemate. My mission is complete. Just after Ryan and their air blast into the magic shield, Professor Flitwick took Simon, Neville, and seven or eight armors out of the castle gate. The lower grade students were sent out by me. They should be safe now. That's good, that's good. Professor McGonagall saw a lot of relaxation, but at this moment, a few strong lights suddenly shot from the distance hit the protective cover. The translucent protective cover like frosted glass a large number of cracks appeared immediately. In everyone's nervous eyes, these cracks spread faster and faster and the area they cover is getting bigger and bigger. Finally, when the crack covered the entire shield, the entire shield turned into fragments of sky like an electric bulb dropped on the ground. Is Voldemort crazy? As a wizard of the same level as Voldemort, Ryan knew that the spell that smashed Hogwarts Castle with a single blow could not be released simply. He did not know what caused Voldemort to be. When this kind of decisive battle broke out, it gave up reason and directly took this step at the cost of huge consumption. But soon Ryan figured out the reason because as the protective cover was shattered, a weird, mournful scream also reached everyone's ears. As a person who can understand the language of Snake, Ryan heard Voldemort's shouting is a name, Nagini. This is, what happened to Voldemort's snake. After being instilled with knowledge before, Hermione naturally understood Voldemort's roar. To her surprise, Voldemort's roar could hear that Nagini, the crux that had been the focus of this fight, had something bad. I don't know too. Ryan shook his head. But something should have happened. The attack just now was not something that could be done simply. What he should have done was that Nagini had some important problems that left him feeling out of control for a while. Of course, from that roar Zong can also hear that his current emotions are indeed in extreme anger. Ryan's guess is very close to reality, and Voldemort is now standing in a room at the Quidditch Stadium. In front of him was a mess. Nagini, who was supposed to be quiet in the protective cover, had turned into a serpentine black ash on the ground, and a silver dagger inlaid with rubies was left aside. He was sent here to see the traces of two huge snake teeth left on Snape's neck in Nagini. Black blood was pouring out of these two big holes. His face was pale, and the fire of life in the depths of his black eyes was quickly dimming. Voldemort could clearly see that Snape was now in a state of perishment. A few dozen minutes before the puppets attacked from the lake, Voldemort immediately gave up the army that was cut off at the rear and accelerated towards Hogwarts Castle. He believed that the part of the army led by Bellatrix should be able to hold down the enemies in Hogsmeade, so that they could not help Ryan rescue the school. When Voldemort was approaching the city, to keep his Horcrux safe, 
He asked Snape and Nagini to look after Nagini in a room in the Quidditch Stadium that had just been occupied. Who is one of the most reliable Death Eaters of his own. At the same time, for unreliable reasons, he took Snape's wand. Voldemort believed that www.mtlnovel.com Snape without his wand would never harm Nagini hidden in his protective cover. But now he found that he had made a big mistake. Snape was definitely not as loyal to him as he performed. The rare magic dagger can show that he has planned for today's things for a long time. This also means that the Great Dark Lord was actually deceived by a person with brain closure, and the price is the most precious Horcrux. Fortunately, I'm not alone in this Horcrux. Voldemort took a deep breath and said to himself, then looked at Snape who was lying on the ground and asked calmly, Tell me, why are you doing this? He was sincerely curious. Because Voldemort thought he gave Snape absolutely enough knowledge, wealth, status, and trust. He couldn't really understand why Snape did something like this now when he was about to win. After all, for the wizard, if you lose your wand, you want to use a short dagger to kill a giant viper like Nagini. Especially in the current scene, Voldemort can judge that Snape let Nagini bit him on the neck while destroying the magic protection with a dagger and then endured the severe pain and suffocation to give it a fatal blow. Voldemort did not know what allowed Snape to die so generously. At this time, Snape's condition was already very bad, and it wasn't just blood that bleed out of him. There was also a silver blue thing, neither gas nor liquid, which came out of his mouth, ears, and eyes. After hearing Voldemort's questioning, Snape's throat made a terrible sound of whining, gurgle. Then he used his last effort to raise his head and watched Voldemort spit out a word. Lily. Chapter 748 deadlock. Finally, he said that he had admired his whole life and made himself guilty for half his life. Snape sighed as if relieved, and then something in the depths of those black eyes seemed to disappear, and they became dazed, dull, and empty. At the same time, the head just raised fell to the ground, and the whole person stopped moving. Betrayal, deceit. Voldemort said angrily at Snape's body. You admit to me that there are other women in the world. The bloodline is purer and more worthy of you. It is all deceit. You actually to deceive the great dark lord for a mud woman who did not choose you. Speaking of this, Voldemort, whose eyes were blazing, fired an enchantment and hit Snape's body, turning him into ashes and blood on the ground mixed with those silver blue substances. Then he slammed his robe and raised his wand, shattered the roof and flew up. After drifting into the air through the hole on the roof, Voldemort waved the wand in his hand and sang a spell forever. As the sound of the last spell dropped, a white beam of light flew out of his wand and shattered the protective cover of Hogwarts Castle. At the same time he raised his head in anger and shouted in snake language. Nagini, long live the Dark Lord. Death Eaters who don't understand the language of the snake cheered when they saw Hogwarts magic shield shattered by the Dark Lord, and the morale of the former was reduced due to various irregularities. A lot. Hearing the long cry of the Dark Lord, Hogwarts guards immediately became nervous. Especially after the disappearance of the most important protective cover, this call means that the decisive battle is about to begin. Push, a leading Death Eater carefully confirmed that Hogwarts magic shield had completely disappeared, standing in front of everyone and shouted and then the black crowds rushed up. Now, Professor McGonagall turned around and raised her wand to raise the morale, but when she habitually raised her head, her eyes opened at once, and her face was shocked. Look, others watched Professor McGonagall's face suddenly change and turned her eyes subconsciously to look at the top of the castle. As a result, they saw a scene that shocked them extremely, a castle flying in the sky is now floating low above Hogwarts Castle. I'm glad to introduce you the secret weapon I prepared for this war, the floating fortress. Ryan took a slight upward corner of his mouth, and then used magic to expand the sound so that everyone present could hear it regardless of the enemy. And I also prepared a large army to block the obsidian puppets that almost covered the entire open space. As Ryan spoke to everyone, ten voids were exposed on the hemispherical bottom of the floating fortress, and then black dots were ejected from inside. As the black dots got closer and closer to the ground, everyone saw that the black dots were actually four-footed robots two people tall. Under the influence of magic, when these robots landed close to the ground, the rate of decline slowed down suddenly, and then landed safely on the ground. They soon built a steel line between the Death Eaters and Hogwarts Castle. At this time, the Death Eaters who responded from the shock launched a charge, but the resistance in the castle also used a curse to fight back. All kinds of magic spells filled every inch of the space outside the castle in an instant. A few seconds after the two sides exchanged fire, the obsidian monster puppets running on the front of Voldemort's side hit the line of defense built by Ryan's steam robot. These huge guys made a violent noise in the collision, and from time to time mushroom clouds formed by explosions rose up on the battlefield. These explosions were made by steam robots who rushed into the Death Eaters camp after the counterattack. After they were made, Ryan installed a self-detonation device filled with bomb cherries on them. Obviously, the Death Eaters hiding behind the puppet didn't even think of this trick. Ryan saw that many Death Eaters were hit by magic metal fragments formed by the explosion and never stood up again. Unfortunately, 
These high-speed flying enchanted metal fragments are not good for those obsidian puppets. They can only leave some scratches on their hard surfaces. So after the first round of raids, the Death Eaters who discovered this also learned their lessons and slowed down their progress, and then let the puppets line up in a dense formation. But in this way, the slow-moving Death Eaters also created opportunities for the landing of Ryan Steam robots. Over time, more and more robots descended from the floating fortress, and they also received reinforcements from those statues at Hogwarts. The line of defense became thick and firm with the naked eye. Soon after the battle, if the group of Death Eaters did not destroy the floating fortresses, they could not even get close to the city walls, let alone rushed into the castle to kill them as originally planned. However, because of the distance, only a few spells hit the floating fortress, but they were easily blocked by the protective shield that came with the fortress. Of course, Ryan is not without losses as a cheap consumable steam machine. In addition to detonating at first, people really beat the Death Eaters by surprise. The exchange ratio in the rest of the time seemed a bit terrible. Even with the help of a large number of wizards, they have to fall on average five or six to get an obsidian puppet destroyed. In addition, because the Death Eaters are indeed more than the guards, the guards of Hogwarts also played very hard. Ryan saw two stone beasts guarding the entrance of the teacher's office when he was about to rush out of the front line and was hit by a non-coming curse, which turned into four or five pieces and squirmed weakly on the floor, moaning weakly in his mouth. Colono, leave me alone. Just let me lie here and die by myself. It's so lucky. Lu Ping said with a gleeful expression. He fired a spell a few seconds ago to stun a Death Eater, then hid behind a wall stack and watched a few dangerous spells fly across the wall. I have to say that he hid in time because the position it occupied was hit by at least three or four dangerous spells at this moment. What do you say? Lucky. Ryan waved his wand to block a spell flying towards him. www.mtlnovel.com then disintegrated an extremely active obsidian baboon on the battlefield with a pink light. Suddenly escaped the Death Eater's fire. Then he leaned against a solid stone wall and yelled to loop in a few meters away. I think it's the biggest misfortune we have been attacked today. I mean, fortunately, Dora couldn't come after she had just given birth. Otherwise she would definitely have to worry about her at this time Lu Ping's voice didn't fall, and he saw a werewolf directly charged by a life spell, hit the chest, and then fell into the castle from the wall. Fortunately, he had a protective suit to block this for him, but he couldn't take part in the battle next. Ryan looked out and looked under the city wall, and saw that Janka quickly ran to the falling werewolf to check with the wand. He walked towards the castle, and at the same time made an okay gesture to Lane. That's good, Lu Ping Cheng breathed a sigh of relief and then continued to participate in the battle, and Ryan, as the focus of the Death Eaters, set off to fight in the opposite direction, while firing a spell to destroy the powerful obsidian puppets. Ryan did this to elicit Voldemort, just as he knew that the destruction of Voldemort was the core of the war, and Voldemort knew that he could only rush into Hogwarts castle to kill Harry only if Ryan was eliminated. It's just that Ryan has been hiding in the castle with other people, although Voldemort is arrogant. He is not arrogant enough to think that he can rush into the castle alone and be able to defeat Ryan under a siege of a large group of people. So for Voldemort, he must now break the deadlock and kill Ryan in the shortest time, otherwise he will fail completely when Dumbledore returns. Chapter 749, The First Evil Five or six minutes after the protective cover was destroyed, there was a feeling of life for Ryan. He hoped that those who fought alongside him would live smoothly until the end of the war. So at this point, like Voldemort, he hopes that the two will start a one-on-one -on -one battle as soon as possible. Of course, Ryan's confidence came from the magic tower on the floating fortress. He believes that even the dark wizards who are familiar with Voldemort's knowledge can never imagine that the magic towers of other worlds can increase one's ability to cast spells to an extremely scary level in a short time. But in order to prevent this very important point from being discovered by Voldemort, it will not fail. Ryan now not only can't go out to find Voldemort, but has to hide his backhand in the manner of delaying time. Thankfully. Time is not on Voldemort's side in the current battle, because even Voldemort himself could not guess how long the back of the London Ministry of Magic he had arranged could hold Dumbledore long. But one thing is certain, that as time goes by, the probability of Dumbledore suddenly appearing to join the battle at Hogwarts Castle is also increasing. Voldemort would certainly not allow himself to plan a desperate blow at this time, so Ryan felt that he only needed a little patience, and Voldemort would force him to take the initiative. After all, if he fails to achieve his goal in this operation, then all the resources he has accumulated in the past few decades after today's war will be exhausted. Then they can hunt down the orphaned Voldemort like a water dog. This is absolutely unacceptable to Voldemort, who thinks highly of himself, and he would rather take a gamble at this time than he would look down. Everything was as Ryan analyzed. After another three minutes of stalemate, a black mist flew from behind the puppets and Death Eaters, and then a white light that was exactly the same as the one that had just destroyed Hogwarts Castle hit the floating fortress. Fortunately, the modular energy magic shield on the floating fortress suddenly appeared in front of the white light and successfully blocked the blow. 
Kachu, staring at the black mist flying in the air at high speed, Ryan summoned his pair of pink wings and flicked it up, and then turned into a stream of light directly into the sky. Road Shadow After he left the ground, the wand he held in his right hand quickly slid through the air, drawing one by one runes that looked extremely complicated and delicate. Just as he flew to a distance of 40 or 40 meters from Voldemort, the black mist suddenly stopped in the air, revealing a black human figure. Then the black figure raised his wand and pointed at Ryan, and a large amount of green light shot at him like a cannonball. Sure enough, Voldemort's attack on the air fortress was just a deception, the purpose was to lead Ryan. Of course, Ryan, who has a lot of hearts in mind, was not deceived. When he saw the life-spelling spell that hit like a raindrop, he immediately dispersed the simple rune phantoms in his hand and then suddenly slammed his wings down to avoid most of the spell. When he quickly fell more than 10 meters, he opened his wings again, and then quickly moved to the left to avoid the several life spells that Voldemort chased. It must be admitted that Voldemort is indeed strong enough. At least Tryon had never seen anyone else like Voldemort able to cast a life spelling spell like a normal spell without stopping the shooting. You finally came out. Voldemort floated in the air overlooking Ryan, the mouth without lips on the bare head twisted and then his unique cold voice resounded through the battlefield. I'll say it again, hand over Harry Potter, and I will immediately leave here with people. The great Lord Voldemort knows how to appreciate courage, and everyone can see that if I join the battle, the broken iron is. My robots don't need to block you, because this task is mine. Ryan interrupted Voldemort's words, then climbed up sharply and threw out a group of white fireballs with blue electric lights. Voldemort had to condense several silver-blue flame shields from the surrounding air to block these fireballs flying at all angles. His face was amazed at first, and then he showed an unprecedented expression of anger. Since he used a magic facelift and changed his name, no one has dared to interrupt Ryan face to face like this for so many years. Muds like you must die tragically. After blocking the fireball of Ryan before, Voldemort waved his wand and pulled out a black python into the surrounding air. Then the giant python rushed at Ryan, spitting blue fireballs at it in his mouth. This cloud-like python seems to have life, and several spells released by Ryan did explode a part of the body of cloud and mist, but soon the python summoned the character from the thin air to supplement itself. In this case, he had to fight and retreat under the double chase of python and Voldemort. Dirty mud, turn around and fight me. Don't run around like a chased mouse. Voldemort laughed and released the curse while humiliating Ryan in words. Turn your head and fight me head on. As you wish. To Voldemort's surprise, Lane suddenly stopped at this time and landed on the astronomical tower of Hogwarts Castle. Then he raised his wand and looked at Voldemort. Only then did Voldemort find himself flying too far while chasing Ryan, so that he has now rushed into the sky between the floating fortress and Hogwarts Castle. But after glancing at the resistors struggling against the Death Eaters below, he made a sneer. You did let me out of my subordinates. But now it seems that your companions did not rush here in time. Then he also landed on the astronomical tower, and then made the black cloud snake oil around by his side. Go die now. This is what I want to tell you. Ryan said with a sharp wand, and an invisible wave of magic power came from the floating fortress above his head, covering the entire astronomical tower. This is, what? Voldemort's eyes widened in disbelief, and he noticed that the black mist giant snake he had summoned before disappeared at once as if he had never appeared. In the process, he didn't feel anything abnormal. This is my magic, Ryan said as he drew the enemy fencing from the space pocket, then stared at Voldemort's eyes. The mud type is the mud type, and it will only take this low-level mole weapon. Seeing Ryan taking out his two-handed sword Voldemort made a sneer, then raised the devil and waved. But nothing happened after the wand was dropped. He frowned and waved the wand again quickly, but everything is still the same as before. www.mtlnovel.com This is a field of forbidden magic. After discovering that the curse could not be fired at all, Voldemort's eyes immediately revealed a deep fear, and he now knew what the killer's weapon Ryan had prepared. A long time ago, he thought that he was an absolute killer, a high god, and would send death to all rebels and become the master of death. However, when the blade of the killing turned to himself, and death approached step by step, Voldemort found that he was as terrified as mortals. Seeing Ryan approaching with his sword, Voldemort waved his wand wildly and stepped back step by step until he leaned on the protective wall of the astronomical tower. At this time, the coolness behind the stone wall finally calmed his confused brain. I still have so many horcruxes, and I will definitely not die here. Thinking of Voldemort calming down here, but before he had time to make any cruel words, Ryan raised his long sword and struck hard. Poof! There was a slight sound. A white light gently brushed Voldemort's neck like a spring breeze, bringing a red and black wave. Voldemort's expression froze, and the last expression he left in the world was a complex expression that seemed to be thinking and seemed to be confused. Afterwards, the red and black bloodlines on his neck grew longer and longer, and finally his head fell off his neck and rolled to the ground. Voldemort simply died, just like a most ordinary person. His headless body slowly leaned against the wall and fell to the ground, and the head, which was smoother than others, stopped rolling and stopped at Tryon's feet. 
But everything is not over yet. Ryan looked at the battlefield under the fierce battle under the city wall and realized that he still had many things to do. Chapter 750, Victory in War. Ryan, are you okay? Just as Ryan lowered his head and looked at Voldemort's head, a familiar grapple hooked the top of the wall, and then Hermione flipped in directly from the outside of the wall. Road, it's okay, I won. Ryan turned and said to Hermione who had jumped in from the gate of the astronomical tower, and then pointed at Voldemort's headless body. Voldemort is the now. This Voldemort is finally dead, and the war can finally be over. Hermione saw Voldemort's headless body froze for a moment, but soon she adjusted, and a smile slowly appeared on her face. It's a little bit worse, Ryan said, bending down. He had wanted to show Voldemort's head to everyone like DV, and found that Voldemort had no hair or nose, and there was a little protrusion on the entire head. No. There is simply no way for people to bring up this slick stuff. Let me come. Hermione stepped up and pulled out her wand, then tapped the black and red blood of Voldemort on the ground with the tip of the stick. With a recitation of the mantra, the blood pool stretched out a large number of red and black tentacles as if it were alive. Soon, these tentacles found two fractures on Voldemort's body and connected the head to the body. I didn't expect that you actually chose Voldemort's deadliest wizard. Hermione teased as he watched Voldemort's head stitched to the body. If he is still alive, he will definitely put you at the top of his list of kills. Actually, I wanted to kill him with a gun. Ryan shrugged his shoulders. But in any case, he is a dark devil who has wrecked the entire British magic world and even the European magic world for decades. So I think he the dead should have some sense of ritual. You're right, it's like drinking the best black tea when you have to choose the best tea set. Hermione nodded, then glanced at the ground and said, the body is assembled. Ryan lowered his head, and saw that Voldemort's head had been taken back in another place, but the red and black traces on his neck showed what had happened. This magic is very useful. Ryan praised Hermione, and then lifted the forbidden field on the floating fortress and spread his wings and flew. Beneath him is Voldemort's corpse suspended by hooking one leg with magic. Seeing this scene, the Death Eaters who are still struggling toward the direction of the castle collapsed at once. In fact, at least half of them have been killed in battle, but Voldemort pressure makes them dare to go forward. After Voldemort's body appeared, they tried to escape but were quickly surrounded and disarmed by the anti-water obsidian puppets and steam robots. It has to be said that Voldemort is indeed someone who never trusts others, so all these obsidians are controlled by Voldemort through a brass horse lantern burning the fire of the soul. This also gave Ryan a convenience. He found this thumb thick lantern from Voldemort's body and easily understood its usage, and then manipulated these obsidian puppets to fight back against the Death Eaters. In this way, the Death Eaters who besieged Hogwarts all collapsed especially after they found that the Death Eater logo on their arms completely disappeared, they knew that Voldemort would never come back. The Death Eaters who besieged Hogsmeade led a fatal assault under the leadership of Bellatrix, but were quickly suppressed by Ryan's alchemy puppets and obsidian puppets. After the suppression, at least six the Finnish Death Eater died in this fatal assault. The only damage they caused was that after Bella was caught by an obsidian puppet, she exploded the silver legs that Voldemort gave her and the obsidian puppet died together. With victory? Professor McGonagall said in disbelief as the disarmed Death Eaters were bundled together under the surveillance of robots and puppets. Yes, Professor McGonagall, and everyone else. Ryan heard the words, then amplified his voice and shouted, We really won, Voldemort will never come back. A horrifying silence swept through Hogwarts Castle, and people were stunned because they couldn't believe it. Immediately afterwards, there was a tumult of noise in the Hogwarts Castle, shouting, cheering, and roaring. The midday sun illuminates everything and removes the darkness in the corner of the castle. Soon everyone rushed out of the castle and shouted indifferently, releasing their inner happiness and excitement. Because everyone knew that Voldemort was dead, this nightmare that had lasted for decades was finally over. At this time, a group of people suddenly appeared on an open space by the lake, led by Dumbledore with a silver white beard. Just after standing firm, they hurried towards Hogwarts Castle. But after climbing up the shallow by the lake, they slowed down, and then looked shockedly at the empty space in front of the school gate where a bunch of Death Eater captives surrounded by various puppets guarded, cheering people and borrowing lion with pink wings flying into the sky and the body of Voldemort hanging under him. Soon, these wizards who completed the task of capturing the Ministry of Magic in London also joined the celebration. The house self ran out of the underground kitchen where he had just hidden. According to the instructions of Principal Dumbledore, today everyone will hold a celebration on the lawn in front of the door. After seeing the house elves moving out of the stove, Everyone was huddled together, teachers and students, ghosts, and guards, after a fierce morning battle, were indeed hungry at this time. Ryan saw Professor Lakerhorn, who had gotten rid of his heart disease, laughing, and Professor McGonagall beside him also rarely raised a toast filled with honey wine with Trelawney. Ryan fell down to meet Hermione at this time, and then throw Voldemort's body into the hut beside the auditorium. Fortunately, because of the effect of the suit of the anti-death curse, 
No one has lost their guards unfortunately. There are only a few seriously injured people who may need to rest for a few days to half a month. As he laid out Voldemort's body and walked outside, he saw Dumbledore and Harry walking upstairs with a flask full of memory in his hand. This is, Ryan looked at the bottle in Professor Dumbledore's hand www.mtlnovel.com suddenly had an unknown hunch. Snape he sacrificed. Professor Dumbledore said in a low voice. Ryan's eyes widened when he heard the news. He did not expect that after changing so many things, Snape still the original book also fell on the eve of victory. Sorry, Ryan didn't know what to say at this time, but Dumbledore waved his hand. You didn't need to apologize the least. Today's practices at Hogwarts and Hogmode are flawless. You killed the evil Lord Voldemort and protected so many people who survived the war. This is already very good thing. Dumbledore paused here, and then went on to say, and Snape's sacrifice, may have been his own choice. After he finished shaking the crystal bottle in his hand, when I found him, his body had been destroyed by Voldemort. But he left these memories. I think we can see some key things from this. You would you like to come together? Of course I do. Professor Dumbledore, Ryan said as she and Hermione followed the headmaster and climbed the stairs down the stairs before entering the headmaster's office. The stone meditation basin was placed in the cupboard as usual, and Dumbledore moved the large stone basin with the Niven symbols on the table to the table, and poured Snape's memory into it. Will we look at the professor's privacy? Hermione asked, looking at the rotating object in the basin. Don't worry. Professor Snape wants us to see when he is willing to leave these things, otherwise, he won't let these memories flow out. Dumbledore explained, and then said, Okay, let's go check it out. Chapter 751, Memory and the Future It took more than ten minutes for everyone to read Snape's memory together. When he met Harry Potter's mother when he was young, he met Harry's father on the train. Because of the quarrel between Snape's friends who like black magic, Harry Potter's father bullied Snape so much that Snape scolded Harry Potter's mother for the life of regret. Words. After that, the whole situation changed sharply. Lily married James, and later joined the Phoenix Society to fight with Voldemort, and Snape joined Voldemort's command and became a Death Eater. In an accident, the secret he overheard became the culprit in killing Harry's mother. Then there was the story of Snape's sinking and redemption in the dark, until he lurked into Voldemort's side again at the end of the last semester following the orders of Dumbledore. When he last met Dumbledore before leaving Hogwarts, he said he would take the opportunity to kill the snake that was Voldemort's Horcrux and asked Dumbledore to leave before lending to Dumbledore's Gryffind or Dagger. At the end of the memory, after he entered the Quidditch Stadium, Snape found that he had the best chance of assassination, so he killed Nagini at the expense of his life with the Gryffind or Dagger hidden in his body when his wand was taken away by Voldemort. The last scene of the memory was Snape's last effort to read Lily's name in front of the thunderous Voldemort, and everything sank into darkness. Sure enough, as Professor Dumbledore said, Snape took the initiative to embrace death. He felt that what he should have done at this time was already done, so he did not need to persist in the world with guilt. By this time, everyone had risen from the meditation basin, and everyone's face looked a little heavy, as the only female among these people. Hermione stood upright with her hands clasped on her chest, still muttering something in her mouth. Ryan leaned on her side, only to hear her read in Latin, I have fought that beautiful battle, and I have ran away when I ran, and I have kept the faith, since then. A crown of righteousness will last for me, so. So Professor Snape did cause the death of my parents, but he also saved me with his life. Harry showed a very tangled expression, then looked at Dumble with hopeful eyes. Professor Lido. Harry, blue eyes stared at the green eyes through half-moon-shaped lenses. For a variety of reasons, Snape did make many irreparable mistakes when he was young. But you also saw it. He after discovering his mistakes, use all the time left in your life to make up for the mistakes you made. So, I hope you don't focus all your hatred on him. I didn't hate him that much. At least he didn't really hurt me personally. And I also understood that it was Voldemort and the long-standing bloodline discrimination that permeated the wizarding world. Harry was slow but said firmly. I think over the years, he has made so many contributions and even gave my life. I must let everyone know that there is such a person who resists Voldemort in the dark. As for the indirect killing of my parents, Harry paused here, then squeezed his lips hard. I think Professor Snape should meet my parents now. Let them resolve their grievances. After Harry finished speaking. The office became quiet. Dumbledore slapped Harry's shoulder approvingly and said nothing, but Ryan could see Dumbledore's eyes filled with relief. He should be very happy that Harry hadn't fallen into some kind of revenge. Harry, I will help you too. Lane also smiled and said, You can go downstairs to find Mr. Lovergood in a moment. I just saw him celebrating with Luna downstairs. He should be happy to help you write an article about Professor Snape and send it to the newspaper tomorrow morning. There are also broadcasts. Hermione added, Lee Kielden is also downstairs. I just saw him and the Weasley twins together. He should and would be very willing to preach the time and energy he devoted to this war, people of resources and even life. Thank you, thank you everyone. Harry hugged everyone in the room happily. After finally embracing Dumbledore, Dumbledore said to Harry, Well, 
I think you should go to the square and those young people have a good celebration together. What about you? Harry asked with a slight tilt of his head from Dumbledore's side, watching Ryan and Hermione. Aren't you going downstairs together to celebrate now? Especially Ryan you. Everyone hopes to see the hero who defeated Voldemort now. We still have something to talk to Principal Dumbledore, mainly about the arrangement of many things after the end of this war, so we may have to wait for a while. Lane said to Harry, you first let's celebrate. After watching Harry leave, Dumbledore turned to the table and turned out two chairs in front of him, instructing Ryan to sit down. Then, with my elbows on the table, I said with a smile, I do have a lot of things I want to communicate with you. The most important thing is that we all know that after Voldemort's death, the war will soon be completely over. Then the next day do you have any plans? Of course it is to join the reconstruction work first. Too many things have been destroyed and too many people have been injured in this war. I think that since we have this ability, of course we are mobilizing all the resources in our hands to let the British magic world in recover in the shortest time, Ryan said. For example, we will go to Xanduosu and the Weasley brothers after we go downstairs to discuss the transformation of the post-war enterprise and the issue of loans to people in need. I can't believe that Yuling Pavilion used to provide only the business of renting safes and pawns, plus a little bit of currency exchange with Mulworld. There is not even the simplest deposit or loan. Speaking of which, Ryan shook his head. He had never paid attention to these things before. He became a shareholder of the United Wizarding Bank of England before he discovered that the Gulenge was a renaissance bank as a whole and it was a complete mess in finance. This is why the business became so good after the opening of the United Wizarding Bank of Britain, because they filled a gap in the British wizarding world. You are doing very well, Dumbledore nodded approvingly, especially the low interest loan you proposed. Several people I know think that the low interest loan in the bank helps them to get out of their difficulties and get back on track. It would be great if you can help others. Ryan and the two nodded happily at the same time. It was a great thing to help others while achieving their goals. This made them feel their lives. The realization of value. But the post-war not rebuilding will end soon. What are you going to do after everything returns to normal? Dumbledore asked after he helped his glasses. Join the Ministry of Magic, open a store, go to school as a professor, do magic research or do something else. We plan to open a school a school for the whole of Europe. After glancing at Hermione, Ryan began to paint Dumbledore's blueprint very seriously. This is the idea that came out after the last trip to Tankow. We hope to build a school similar to Tanzhou Alchemist Academy to provide a place for wizards who are interested in further education after graduating from school. Yes, Hermione nodded. According to our investigation, except for some members of the pureblood family, after graduation, there is basically no channel for further in-depth learning, and from the Malfoy and Mrs. Greengrass, we learned that some mixed or poor the reason pureblood-born Death Eaters chose this path is because they can learn from Voldemort. It turns out this is the case www.mtlnovel.com I must say that you are pursuing an ambitious goal and wish you all the best. After hearing Ryan's words, Dumbledore comfortably plucked his beard. Yes, yours are the teacher and location ready? Of course you are ready. Ryan smiled. He had already made a lot of preparations for this matter before, and he did not start doing it now. Professor Luping has agreed to my invitation, and Ollivander agrees to come and teach him some knowledge when he has time. As for the position of the school, Ryan looked up at the floating fortress. We will open the floating fortress as a school. Such a school that is different from the rest should be able to attract those who wish to acquire knowledge, and we will also find those technologies that are useful to society from the results of subsequent research and application. Go to promote the development of a magic world. It would be great if this was the case. Dumbledore watched Ryan as they arrived. The British magic world as a whole has been stagnant for too long. I hope you can bring some new changes to this stagnant world as everyone hopes. After coming out of Dumbledore's office that day. Ryan and they directly joined the celebrating crowd downstairs. From here they also received news from all directions, the people who had been cast the soul retribution gradually returned to normal. Most of the Death Eaters were arrested, and only a few of them fled from the situation, but were also pursued. In. At the same time, the Minister of Magic Amelia Burns announced the establishment of a post-war reconciliation and liquidation committee, under which she and Professor Dumbledore were directly responsible for comprehensively resolving various remaining issues in those wars. In short, the old history has been completely rewritten, and a new and bright future is coming. Chapter 752, The Finale 19 years later After the war ended, the British magic world slowly healed the trauma caused by the war over time, and everything became prosperous again. In particular, this war greatly hit the ancient pureblood family that was originally the upper class of the wizarding world. From a certain angle, the British wizarding world became more active than before. With the introduction of advanced training schools, new banks, and many new things. The British wizarding world has also undergone rapid changes, and many new things have also been introduced into this once stagnant country. Of course, everyone in this changing world has also changed. A few months after the end of the war, after the Ministry of Magic returned to London and announced that the post-war reconstruction had ended completely, Ryan and Hermione first held their own weddings on the floating fortress, and then Cedric and Janku, 
Percy and Penlow and many others also held weddings because they delayed the wedding. After marriage, Ryan and Hermione, in addition to dealing with work in other worlds, the most important work in this world is to establish their own school. Unexpectedly, in the third year after the end of the war, Professor Dumbledore actually handed over the position of President Hogwarts to Professor McGonagall, and then hung a visiting professorship at their school in Lane. The war is over and my age is older. Some things should also be handed over to the next generation. This is what Dumbledore told him when he came to visit Tryon suddenly that day. So I retired, but I don't think I am too old to walk, so I came to you and hope to be a visiting professor at the new school. Ryan felt that this was Dumbledore's worry about becoming the next Dark Lord. After all, he did start a bit too fierce in the war. However, he still accepted Dumbledore's request on the spot, because he did not want to rule the world like Voldemort, and the addition of Professor Dumbledore was very conducive to the development of his school. In this way, time passes day by day, and Ryan's position in the British magic world is getting higher and higher, more and more stable. One day, the marginalized Prophet Daily even published an article on the topic of the time of Liang. Dot. After that war, Ryan Liang, the wizard of this ordinary family, grabbed the power of the British magic world, from finance to manufacturing from education to the media. His tentacles covered all aspects of the British magic world. Okay, Hermione, and now the Daily Prophet has fallen to such a sensational headline that attracts attention, Lane said, while eating his own breakfast. Yes, we are going to send it today. Are the two little guys going to school? Yes, Hermione put down the newspaper and said, I really admire the two of Luna's family. Even her daughter can't go back to school in time. I can only wait on platforms nine and three quarters tomorrow. Ryan and Hermione did not make for their children because eternal life comes at a price. But this does not mean that their family is very deserted now, such as Lupin, Sirius, Harry, Ron and Percy. The children of these friends often come to them as guests, and even Luna will treat her and her for a long time after marriage. Rolf's Commandress twin daughters were fostered at Lane's house. Probably because of the butterfly effect, Luna's twin sons in the original text became twin daughters. Since the two little guys were one year old, Luna and her husband embarked on a journey of discovery around the world, and their two daughters spent more time in Lane's house than in their own. Soon, two little brown-haired girls and a group of dolls came downstairs, after greeting them with Ryan. They sat at the table and ate breakfast. In the more than ten years since the end of the war, Ryan has also systematically imitated Mr. Liu O's and to create six puppets, named after fluorescent lamps, Galuro, Obsidian, King Shanjing, Magenta, and Raspberries. These puppets have been working as professors in the school and they also work part-time as experimental assistants. And out of the puppet's curiosity peculiar to life, they even took the initiative to take care of the two little guys. After breakfast, everyone packed up and drove a magical SUV straight to the train station. They arrive at the train station earlier, so they can easily push the luggage cart from the parking lot to the huge, blackened train station. The exhaust of the car and the water vapor exhaled by pedestrians shone like spider webs, floating in the cool air. Two large cages rattled on the roof of the luggage cart pushed by their parents, and the owl in the cage barked dissatisfiedly. Uncle, will my parents come to see us today? Lisa, the sister in the twins, raised her face and asked Tryon. Of course, although they usually have some unreliable occasions, but they will not lie to you in this kind of thing. Lane said to her. The family walked across the wall towards the partition between platforms 9 and 10. Passengers stared at the owl curiously. After waiting a few minutes, while others were not paying attention, Ryan crossed the partition wall and reached platform 9 and 3 quarters. The platform was enveloped by a large amount of white mist from the Hogwarts Express train, and blurred figures surging in the mist. Hermione, Ryan, here. Just as Ryan looked around in the steam everywhere, a figure bounced to Ryan and greeted them. After Ryan and Hermione approached the children, they saw that Luna was really saying hello, and beside her, Rolf's commander looked at himself as a girl with mixed spoiling and helpless eyes. Wife, how are you traveling to Dankow this time? Ryan asked Rolf, for the entire eight months before. Rolf and Luna had been conducting their travel and scientific research in Tankow. Very good, Rolf said with a smile. We have seen many magical creatures that have only been seen in books before, and at the same time discovered a magical plant that has never been seen before. The plant was named after his wife's name. And there was a surprise on this trip. We met the Phoenix Fengling who met my grandparents that year, and he asked us to send you a message to say hello. This trip is indeed great, Ryan nodded, and after a few more chats. Harry and Ron walked out of the mist with their families. The four members of the Malfoy family in the distance saw Harry and they did not go further, but waved and greeted Ryan from afar. Since Ryan resolved the curse on Astoria at Malfoy's request, the exchange between the two has gradually increased. But Harry and Ron still didn't look too far with the Malfoy family, which is why Malfoy was just saying hello far away. However, Harry and Ron, who turned their backs on the Malfoy family, did not see this scene. They were still very enthusiastic and greeted them. Especially Ron's actions are a bit exaggerated and even almost hit his daughter Rose. Dad, calm down, 
everyone around is watching you. Rose looked helplessly at her father. Oh, yes, that's it, Ron said, looking at the people around him a little bit unnaturally. I'm just, just too excited. He's always so funny, Lavender walked from behind Ron and kissed his cheek. So cute, my dear, a little restrained, here is outside, and there are many acquaintances around. Ron said blushing. At this time, Rose made a grimace next to him, indicating that he was really fed up with his parents. The behavior of, ah, let's find it. Percy took his son out of the steam, then looked at Ryan and said, Penlo is working overtime again, and the joke store manager's job is too busy. I remember clearly taking a holiday for her. Hermione said a little puzzled, but she found that the shipment from Brazil seemed to be a problem this morning, and she ran directly to Rio de Janeiro. Percy shrugged helplessly. It's okay to deal with it in a few days. Hey, Harry's son James got out, unloaded luggage, owls and carts, and apparently had a stomach to talk about. Andromeda is over there he said breathlessly, pointing to the cloud of steam tumbling behind him, just encountered it, guess what she is doing, kiss Victor over, what, Harry and Ron's eyes widened, but Ryan said quietly, let the young people do the young people's things, we still have to adapt to some things, at least Lupin at the last meeting the professor said that he and his wife can accept that their daughter has found a girlfriend, you're right, there are some things I really should learn to adapt to, Harry said and looked at his part that once belonged to Fabian, Pew with sworn watch, it's almost eleven, you get in the car, don't forget to send Neville our letter and greetings, Hermione urged when hugging Luna's daughter, relax, we went to Uncle Longbottom's office on the first day of school break to find him, this time we have a lot of things to give him, your letter, and my parents study notes the twins nodded seriously promised, soon, all the students got into the car, the red car began to close, and the parents' vague figures hugged forward to give the children a last-minute kiss and ding. The students leaned out of the nearest window, and many faces on and off the car seemed to turn to Ryan and their group. Why are they staring? asked Harry's son Albus. Don't worry about this, Ron said exaggeratedly. It's me, I'm especially famous. Everyone started laughing. The train moved, and Ryan and Hermione followed in the footsteps of their parents. Looking at the familiar faces of the children, they smiled and waved their hands away. Ah, it seems that I'm a little late. Just as Ryan and they were going back, Professor Dumbledore appeared quietly behind them in a travel robe, and then he waved his wand to bring them the three were separated from the others. I thought I could catch the Hogwarts Express train and blame me, chatting with an old German friend and forgetting the time. Then your relationship must be very good, right? Hermione said. At this time she and Ryan were back to sixteen or seven years old. After all, immortality is an irresistible temptation for most people. In order to avoid all kinds of troublesome things, Ryan has always maintained the transformation of middle-aged people on his body. Otherwise, you can't talk to him so fascinated. In fact, I sometimes envy you that you can have so many friends for a lifetime. Here, I don't know how to describe our relationship www.mtlnovel.com In short it's hard to say. After hearing Hermione's words, Dumbledore showed a complicated expression. Forget it, not to mention this. Ryan, there is one thing I came to see you today, that is, I hope to take a long vacation. Of course, you can take as long as you want, Ryan said but can I take the liberty to ask what you are going to do? There's nothing to keep secret. Dumbledore chuckled, now everything is on track, your school is doing very well, and the British magic world is very stable. I want to take advantage of the time if Amos Dogi completed the boy's final commitment together and started a journey around the world. Your trip will be great, Ryan said seriously. After all, you have finally fulfilled this promise 100 years ago. Yeah, it's been so long. Dumbledore murmured his eyes and apparently entered the recall mode again. After about a few minutes, Dumbledore came back to God and said, I'm so sorry, this man started to like to remember when he was old. But this is also thanks to you. If you haven't made the wizarding world so smooth, I, I won't travel with confidence. That's because of everyone's efforts, not just me, Lane said modestly. Anyway, the world has been bustling in peace for 19 years. I think this is a very worthy celebration. Yeah, Ryan said softly as she approached Hermione and took her hand, then looked at the traces of milky white steam as the train went away and the golden sunlight that enveloped the surrounding autumn. Now such a quiet and stable world is really great, 